Eric. He is the Italian Stallion Raider. Of course, represented by Clash in the bottom left here from Junior Green Wings, the Protoss Korean. He is trapped. Absolutely sick. No deny for you, Probe. No deny for you. Um, yeah, nice early hatchery there for Rena. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, it's uh, it might actually be an issue when an entire best of seven. I didn't really ping Trap as the guy to always do the um, like delayed probe block is actually what happens mm -hmm. when you see like Mana do that. But gotta imagine it's useful to do it in a best of seven. It's not gonna be all, all adept printers, but Maynard, I gotta expect at least one <laughs> adept build, I mean, if not two or three. A, a best of seven is a lot of video games. And I do think that you're like, it is still a popular build. Like even though it's starting to fall out of fashion and Zerg's gotten very good at reading it and also dealing with it, it is uh, it is something that can just net you a ton of damage. And if it doesn't straight up win the game, at least give you a good start. So yeah, I mean, I absolutely could see it happening here in the series. I would love to see some of that uh, mid to later game style from Trap though. I feel like there is yeah, a lot of people out there that believe that the Zerg army is still extremely powerful in the ultra late game, and yes, it is. But I think there are some Protosses like Trap, like Stats, etc., that have got a very, very good handle of that super late game Protoss army against Zerg as well. So I would look forward to that if it gets there, of course. This series, I mean, I'm just to, just to look at the series in the early game PVZ. Really excited to see. Not only are we going to have a brand new champion here for DreamHack Masters, we haven't had Rainer or Trap win either of these because Trap's been a finalist. Reyna has been a WCS champion before, but it feels like both these guys are kind of like being the bridesmaid and and never the bride, <laughs> as far as like these big international tournaments are concerned. You know, GSL for Trap, uh, even one time in IEM Grand Finals, getting second against Zest, and Reyna making it to second in the world, uh, you know, the WCS Global Finals. So close, but so far in the end, missing out on like an extra $90,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You know, so those really, uh, you know, the, the, when you get to the top two, the prize difference is absolutely massive and mm -hmm. is here as well. But I, I definitely, you know, as a smaller side, I'm a big fan of this new regime's prize distribution. Yeah, a little bit closer everywhere. So I'm um, supporting those, those uh, I guess, not Rainers and not Traps and not Cyrils, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> the non-gods, the, the exactly. half-gods and also the really strong people, re yeah. regular humans. Yep. Uh, we'll just touch on the build a little bit here. It is just going to be a Stargate opener, which is always what I've pinned Trap as, a Stargate player, even when it kind of goes out of fashion in PvT or PvZ or PvP. Like, I feel like he's always doing it pretty reliably, so definitely like his, um, I guess, standard opener, uh, bringing it out, you know, strong and confident in the best of seven. I do want to kind of mention, you know, we, we talked about the last season, how Rainer ended up falling the trap in those semifinals, one to three, I believe. But I feel like it's also worth mentioning that at the time, everyone also was pretty confident Rainer was going to win. I do distinctly remember that. <laughs> yes. So, yep. um, and I actually was able to cast that. I totally forgot that I cast that, but that's just what happens when you cast a billion things. And um, <laughs> it really was, it seemed like Rainer underestimated traps ability to create like he, he actually got a little surprised by trap was like oh i didn't expect that and maybe even fell off a little bit like mentally got a little bit tilted in kind of like an angry way but just angry at himself time away so it is very possible that happens again so while i do you know appreciate trap doing something uh ooh, actually catching drones without a score crawler or queen protecting it um i was gonna say something standard uh, I think he might actually have a better chance in the later games to do something a little bit wonky. But you know what? This is actually a pretty strong oh start. This is something that Rainer yeah. would be very upset with himself. For. Oh, okay. The Oracle does actually escape there with seven drones. It it doesn't look like a lot, but for this phase of the game, that's huge. Uh, Rainer even like pulling the drones here, that Oracle not being super well micro there by trap, but an eighth drone goes down with that guy in a natural. The Spore not being up in time for Rainer really cost him a ton of early game damage. Holy crap, a dozen Jeez. drones. Oh, and they both the survive! <laughs> oh my god! Ooh, like, I'm trying not ooh. to go full hyperbole here, but that is actually insane damage for two oracles. No, it absolutely is. It feels like Rainer is like getting used to ZVP. <laughs> He's been so yeah, used yeah. to ZVT. He was like, oh shoot, I need sport crawlers. And I do want to kind of highlight that it was really nice that Trap went for the natural first, because that is pretty uncommon, right? It's usually the main mm. along the top left corner or to the third along the right um, to catch, you know, the very minimal drones on that third base. To go to the natural was actually a bit of a surprise. That's also why a queen wasn't there. 
but you know, simply put, the sport parlor was also off time. So, um, yeah, double whammy. That's just a very strong start for Trap. Exactly what we're, uh, I guess, talking about what Trap needs to take down the entire best of seven yeah. series. And Rainer needs to kind of just like get over that, right? He just needs to be like, oh, that was a mistake. All right, on to the next thing. Which I'm sure, you know, we've seen Reyna get, uh, like, take a lot of damage in the early game and recover and have an incredible uh, game and, and a victory in the, in the end there. We'll see if that happens, of course, in this game. Plenty of StarCraft to go ahead for us in map one of this grand finale. It, it feels like maybe the, the the opening was a bit of a misread from Reyna. You know, he, he the Stargate positioning for Trap was a little bit sort of tucked away in the main base. Maybe Warp Gate was, like, a little bit well-timed there. Yeah. And normally, you know, you scout the Warp Gate and you're like, oh, okay, it's a Stargate opener because it's a little bit later, right? But uh, yeah, like it, it seemed like he misread the Stargate, just not having those spores in time. Normally a mistake that Reyna would definitely not make. Small little move out here from Trap, which is actually kind of uh, significant now that he's getting a yeah. big warp in a Stalkers here. That's a, that's a lot of firepower. It is indeed. No Twilight Council and no Forge. Very intentional move out. And Reyna is uh, he's already reeling from the damage he took from the Oracles. On top of that, being a little surprised by the timing, he's desperately trying to get up those spine crawlers, Ooh. but they're not quite ready. They're not being target fired either as he focuses down to clean and some roaches. So two of them might complete to help save the day. They might indeed. So that Ravager I thought was toast, but that does warp in. The Stasis Ward being dropped here next to the army. Actually, two Stasis Wards here next to the army to try and catch in anything that tries to collapse onto that Protoss Force. A big warp in of five more Stalkers coming in here from Trap. He's got himself six day gateways here, and he is just powering through Reyna's defenses at that third base. Lovely force fields and Immortal also putting in a ton of damage, and even the Oracles wanting to get a piece. Sporecrawler is going to zone them back, but the Oracles go to the right side, going into the drone line here, while the left side, the Gateway Army and the Robo Army fights back the Roach Ravager. Oh my god, this engagement from Trap has been pretty nice. Reyna just needs to hold on. Yeah, I mean, it is definitely worth noting what Trap is missing out, though, if he <laughs> doesn't manage to demolish this third base. He doesn't take down the army. Some spaces trapped Ling's actually providing another force field, funnily enough. Uh, but this this isn't actually going to cut it. Trap even identifying this says, okay, I'm not going to be able to bust through. Rainer identifying it saying, okay, I've held, starts joining up again. Trap, as I pointed out, he does not have a Twilight Council or a Forge yet. That's no blink. That's no charge. It's no plus one. Definitely going to be a long time for plus two. And while Rainer certainly took damage himself, you know, especially, again, that beginning with the Oracles, right? I mean, this is where we usually see that power of the, the sterile effect, like the guys are talking about, mm -hmm. right? Where it's like, oh no, you get you actually play a macro game with this guy. I don't care how far ahead you are, like somehow he's gonna come back. Watch. Exactly. Yeah, you give him you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. At that, that particular occasion, yes, it looked like Crack was making headway there with that army. Reyna had the much better economy during all of that. It, you know, he managed to drone up quite a bit, like more than I thought he was allowed to, but uh, that's why Reyna is playing and I'm commentating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. It's you can't do coach you can't do pass right there. sorry yeah, yeah that 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 whole that whole thing you can't <laughs> do teach i think is the uh, the original proverb but uh we do have the hydra name going down here for rainer and i'm quite positive that is not just for hydralisk zg that is for the, the lunker the lurkers mm -hmm. just around the corner for rainer as soon as he has a window to get that is at the moment he is still just trying to make sure that the protoss isn't sneaking uh, any kind of backstab against him at the moment yeah Ooh, kill the stalker two stalkers oh trap yeah, a little bit of a mistake there, but uh, I do have to acknowledge that this is on the America server, so kind of like middling bad <laughs> for both players. <laughs> so that could happen. Rainer is actually setting up for an aggressive move out here, and I don't think he's actually going to be able to bust Trap, although the, the lack of charge in plus one is quite concerning, but he's going to control the game with this. Um, certainly delay any fourth base that could have been taken, and uh, really buy himself time to get to a comfortable amount of drones, which he's already at, 75 on four bases, as well as some lurkers. Yeah, and there is the Lurker Den going down here and the Infestation Pit because nothing is hotter than a Tier 3 Lurker. Tier 2 Lurkers, they're not that great. Tier 3 Lurkers, they are so great. We have Charge and Plus One about to finish here for Trap. He's going to try and hit another timing. Yeah, I mean, Rainer backed away. Uh, maybe noticing that there uh, there was a decent amount of units ready to defend. So he's, he's trying to get into a, maybe more of a concave, but I'm actually... Okay, I, hope, I was worried he's going to be a little too baited by those oracles. They actually managed to take both out with no revelation. And now Trap doesn't quite know where the army is, but he's taking an educated guess, moving over to the right side where Rainer absolutely is not. Rainer actually just lost track of the army. I think he'd be pulled back a little bit too soon, and now he's going up his own ramp against this. 
Yeah, this is a really nice position here for Trap's army. Reyna does have a ton of firepower, but he needs to get back up on this high ground. He's going to always be into an, a concave as well until he punches through the army of Trap. These sentries also biting in time on the whole position. There's that concave, and he comes in. Nice force fields from Trap, getting a fair bit of splash damage there on the top side of that bowl of Zerg units from Reyna. And he just continues to get, get more and more ground in that third hatchery and keep him bullied onto that low ground and that rich Vespine base as well. Really love the position for Trap, and he's not leaving anytime soon. Apparently not. It's been a little bit scary when he runs out of force field, of course. He has a couple more, and he's actually warped in a few more, but now it's kind of turning on him. Rainer might be able to get a concave, a collapse in as the force field starts to run low, and Trap acknowledges that and says, all right, all right, okay, I'm done. Eight drones, no bases killed, only slices of the amount of army, and uh, hmm. Trap retreats back to a fourth base to start building up his disruptor count, one of the oldest um, and, and sometimes most complicated way to deal with the disruptors. I mean or sorry, the lurkers, like, I, <laughs> dealing with lurkers is always complicated, but disruptors, while well, they do two-shot lurkers, and they love to catch them when they're all, you know, burrowed in the same spot in a big ball, disruptors aren't reliable, right? Like, that's their biggest weakness. Yeah. They got one shot, and then they're done. So, who to do this on cross-server? Oh, if he does it successfully, I'm going to really respect Trap. Yeah, well, I mean, it'll be very, very, very cool to see him make this micro-intensive unit, as you mentioned, work out for him. Looks like he's got to warp in, geared up for that main base, but Reyna intercepting with his Hydras. No warp wins for you. Get out of here. And I actually feel like the Disruptor, like, oh, you're, you're absolutely correct. The two-shots Lurkers is not the greatest, like, anti-Lurker thing, although it can be great. I feel like the power of the Disruptor is removing the Hydras and the Roaches and the Ravages from those uh, mm. from those Lurkers, because it does one-shot all those units that I listed. And if you can get rid of all that, that that meat shield for the Lurkers, if you've got enough Immortals, Charge Lots, and Archons left over, yeah, those Lurkers die pretty quick. That's a very good point. You know, if you can actually get rid of that fodder, get a decent Concave, have, a, you know, a decent Immortal count in four, should have been five, except that one awkwardly rallied one um it's not bad but also gives the uh, stalkers actually have a decent shot if again they're on that concave trap is really not uh, willing to let go of the the map easily at all he's always out here always you know, trying to catch rainer if he's moving out ideally before those lurkers are fully upgraded but while they don't have their upgrade they are a plenty 10 of them and they are being micro disruptors only one Ooh. shot on one lurker so trap's gotta get out of there yeah, doesn't find a ton of damage there just yet. Backs off. The charge lot's coming in to try and do some damage, but they're, they're getting the threat of that spine crawler, so they're dealing with that first. Zealots getting deflected eventually. Not any actual convincing drone damage there, so the Zealots do get deflected. A relatively inexpensive attack for Trap, though, so the Prism is involved as well. Plus two's about to finish, Blink's about to finish, and Trap's army is about to have a nice uh, uh, power spike here as it gets that upgrade and also the Blink ability means that engaging this army, the, the Roach-heavy army, I guess, of Raynor is a little bit more doable. Uh, those lurkers, though, very hard to break with a uh, with blink stalkers. Yeah, but positioning is is critical. I mean, this is actually an army you can kind of roam about a little bit more, especially with the blink stalkers and trap. Is uh, not being shy about that, so I really like his army movement. Just gonna make sure not to get pounced upon, especially as lurker upgrades finish. Uh, it's also gonna be worried about those vipers that are being made. A couple high templars could be used just for the feedback, uh, and the rest going uh. to those uh, archons. Uh, lurker is finding very unsuccessful damage. Had to just completely retreat. Trap taking a page out of the stats book there. There's never such, such thing as having cannons at your base being bad for you. It's always going to work out. Uh, got aggressive mm. going forward. A little bit scary. Don't quite know where all the workers oh. are. That was a good shot. Um, yeah, the downside of losing those oracles is no revelation to actually see the depth of the lurker line, so it's always scary to actually engage with the Zerg player. But good distraction, actually on the right side, getting 11 drones and then maybe leaving the lurkers a little bit vulnerable, but good micro from Rainer. They're never truly vulnerable, apparently. Uh, Trap is training pretty nicely here. Rainer is getting that army back up to max, though, and as long as he has a maxed out army, he can continue to push Trap back. He's also about to have those upgrades finished up. Disruptors launch in, but in come the Vipers, which is massive for Rainer to be able to just cancel these disruptors, but that Nova to the left side there, absolutely massive. Tons of Zerg units just disappeared in the blink of an eye. Trap's still a threat here with this army on top of that fifth hatchery next to the main. Mm, there's three Vipers, and I think he was like, maybe kind of counting the bullets there in the chamber. You know, is there a disruptor shot left over? I think there was, but that's when the Vipers playing, right? As long as not all seven disruptors have a shot, and you can abduct the ones that do. Rainer paying attention at the last second, still loses a couple of Hydras, abducts one of the shots there. The one oh. Barely hitting the edge of that army. Lurkers holding strong. Rainer also with an incredible bank can remake a lot of these losses. He just can't be broken. If he's broken, he gets, you know, the natural under siege. That's when it gets worrying for Rainer. But when Trap actually disengages, pulls back to his own home, Rainer's like, ooh, I have got cash.
does indeed. Cash money. Plenty of minerals in the bank here for Rainer. Not a ton of gas because he did make a bunch of vipers and a bunch of uh, lurkers and such. But, of course, that will start to grow as his gas mining is monster mining right now. He's actually got a lot more gas mining and a lot more minerals mining than the Protoss. And a Trap is trying to expand, trying to secure his own fifth base as his army moves out on, uh, on the map again to try and visit Zergville. Zergville's kind of scary, man. Definitely it's a, a rough neighborhood, place. not going to lie. Mm. Uh, six more lurkers. Gosh, the It's going to be 18 in total with their upgrades. Um, actually, he's missing the range. Huh. Um, at this point, I think that's a mistake. I'm like, I'm like that's triple, quadruple checking. <laughs> he does not yeah, have the range. That's usually the first thing that you grab. And the, oh my God, a very aggressive blink on top oh. of a bunch of lurkers and trying to zone out the left side of the army, but he actually didn't kill all the lurkers. Three of them were still alive. Yeah, I mean, we were just talking about a mistake from Reyna. That was definitely a mistake from Trappy. Overextended, lost a ton of his gateway unit meat shield there. And now the army of Reyna is trying to intercept. He still hasn't noticed that his range upgrade is missing. But, you know, we're heading into the next phase of the plan here for Protoss. Fleet Beacon is about to finish up. He's got triple Robo Disruptor production. Uh, he's actually just canceled the disruptor production and went for the Immortals instead as we're looking at that, uh, that, 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 that um, production tab there. But it is about to become Sky Toss here for Trap. He's got the, he's got the production there. He's got the tech ready. Oh, Vipers. Immortals once again getting caught in the middle of the map here. Needs all of their friends to stay alive. Oh, big storm on the Hydras. Pretty decent storms, a single feedback. That Lurker count's gonna be very difficult to disrupt though. Only five disruptors left, nine immortals about to be 12. And ooh, that's oh. disruptor shots, but a lot of units now getting pulled. Oh my he might God. have fed back one of the Vipers, but there is still five of them. That was a lot of damage to take. It's basically only immortals now, which the Hydras are gonna happily pounce upon. He just yoinked himself to a wonderful position here. Lots of the disruptors and lots of the robo robotics units being taken out of the next, and they are the anti-lurker units here, guys. The lurkers, they are not afraid of gateway units by themselves. They are afraid of disruptors. They're afraid of immortals. That's going to be a good Nova. Three dead lurkers right there. Beautiful stuff from Trap. Trying to keep Reyna at bay, but the, the supply is not lying here, ZG. It's looking very rough for the Protoss here. Yeah, and as Trap sends away some of his units, hoping, hoping to find Rainer without many reinforcements. I mean, he's got a plenty. He's still maxed out, and they are now here. They got a concave. It's just pure Hydra. Yeah, Trap's army's not going to find any success. Uh, it was a bit desperate, I felt, in the anyways. You know, like it, it probably, you know, best case scenario would have gotten a single hatchery, much less uh, an entire game. Uh, it, it's actually just desperate in general for Trap. I mean, he's trying to get to a mothership. He's relying on his disruptors, but those Vipers are always going to be around, always looking for the abducts. And as soon as the disruptors are out of the equation, look how many Hydras there are. He doesn't even need Lurkers anymore. Oh, I mean, that was a juicy Nova, but he's going to need another three of those to stay alive in this game. And even then, it doesn't feel like he's going to be winning. As in come the Vipers, going to be able to yoink those units back into the Hydra Ball again. Some feedbacks do go down, but not before the damage is done. A few of those Immortals kill for free. A nice charge light run by there is going to probably finish off this really damaged hatchery. But is it going to be consequential is the big question here, is Trap is definitely going to lose this Nexus. I don't think it really will be. Rainer's still going to be on five bases, even without that hatchery where Trap is sent back down. I mean, four is actually not bad, but the problem is he's not on four while maxed. He is on four while about 100 supply down from his opponents. His outrun buys are no longer working out, and Trap, I guess, is just hoping that a mothership will save him, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be abducted, and that's minus 400-400. Yes, uh, I do believe the memes will be correct in this particular occasion as the Hydra count here for Reyna is still pretty nice. He's got 41 of them ZG with plus three attack, about half plus three characters as well. Uh, Reyna is just gearing up for those Eva chambers at the edge of his creep just so he can juice up those Vipers every time. These disruptors do have Novas. Each one of them have one in the chamber, but uh, Reyna is respecting it. Like he could honestly throw a lot away here and still be okay, but he's just making sure that this is, uh, this is a win. He wants that W. Mm, I think he's pretty much got it, but, uh, you know, playing it a little bit safe here, just bulking up, getting more sag defense, potentially preparing for that late game with a Spire on the way. Uh, it's going to be, you know, one, oh, it was a mothership, and then two, abduct, and then three, probably just win. Oh, my God. Oh, oh no, my God. God. Oh, Whoa, that was a very dangerous thing for Raider to go back into the Disruptor Balls, but it ends up working out fine. The Vipers have even abducted the mothership. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, as Reyna, you know you're super far ahead when you can just eat those storms and those disruptors and be completely fine because he's just made every correct move in this game and has found himself in an unlosable situation. Trap GG's Reyna wins game one of the grand final. I was so close to being like, ooh, Trap made a mistake. He sent out every single disruptor shot and then Reyna like moved back into it. And I was like, did he know he was going to do that? But now the yeah. Viper abducts are a little too good. Canceling out that shot's... Um, Pretty good skill to have.
And uh, Rain right. is pretty good at this game, up 1-0. He's not bloody bad, Zombie Grub. That uh, cannot be denied. You know what? I, I respect that from Trap. I like a Protoss that instead of like taking that one shot from the hip, they're just slamming that hammer down, emptying the entire chamber out into the Zerg army. One of those bullets has got to connect, and eventually it did there for Trap. He's, but no doubt at that particular moment, he was feeling a little bit of desperation as he was really against the ropes. Uh, you know, he'd kind of been losing the game for a few minutes at that point. Yeah. And looks like Eternal Empire is map number two. Normally we get the longer games on this one. Usually, usually. I um, you know, I was thinking with, like, you know, with Clem, we we're gonna have that, and then he, what he held that rush against Terrible, and then tried to two facts versus Rainer, but uh, it does usually give us some long games, and I think Rainer is feeling quite confident the longer the game goes, where Trap is a little more on that pressure, and Trap did a fantastic job just changing things a little bit so that on the surface level it really did look quite, you know, bland, you know, Stargate opener, and that's that's you know whatever it's a macro opener most of the time, right? But he probably did start Warpgate to fake out the Overlord. We just didn't catch it. Because we were talking about the two and how good they are at the game. And then um, the immediate follow-up without getting the Twilight Council on the Forge, it's a hard thing for the Zerg to scout or to, you know, remember to scout. That timing is not necessarily what they're, they're going back in to look for. So it was clever, you know, in the third Nexus being like, yeah, I'm totally macro, don't worry about it. It was clever, but it just didn't do enough damage to really hamstring Raynor. That apparently is the question of the entire tournament. Like, do you do enough damage or do you just do okay damage? Yeah, uh, it, to me, it feels like it's another one of those long lists of games where Reyna takes a ton of damage in the early game, but still ends up winning the game. Just because he has that, you know, even as such a, you know, I remember when I was 18, I was a hot-headed idiot, Zombie Grub. I'll be straight up with you. I was not a smart person when I was 18 years old. Some would argue still not smart, you know, as I just turned 35 today. Still not quite there. Oh, yeah. But... You know what? That Rainer kid, for an 18 year old, he is a cool as a cucumber kid. He is so smart. He is so calm and collected. And that's one of the reasons why he's here in this grand final in a long list of accolades in StarCraft 2. He's got uh, a lot of boxes ticked as far as what you want in a professional gamer in this video. Mm -hmm. And in the best of seven, we get a lot of time to talk about the game. So I'm going to take a moment and say that everyone in Twitch chat put your hands together for Maynard's birthday. It's actually his birthday today. He's a big boy now. That's right. Happy I'm birthday, big boy now. Maynard. And I've got the greatest birthday gift of all, Zombie Grub. That is to cost with you for a grand finale in StarCraft 2, my favorite video game on the whole planet, the greatest video game to ever grace the hard drives of yep. PC gaming systems. And also some people out there that play it on Macintosh as well. Uh, shout out to the uh, to the to the dark ones, the unchosen. Um, but that's okay. You know, we're pl pleasure to have you on Battle.net along with us uh, PC Master Race players. Um, but yeah, no, this is a it's been a fantastic birthday, and a, and a, what a way to cap it off. Um, uh, I'm having a I'm having a blast already. And we're only game we're only one game in. I forgot how yeah. much I like commentating this game with you. It's pretty it's pretty fun, isn't it? Like um, I'm gonna be honest, there's like that there is that chance, right? That trap was actually just going to flounder. Like everything didn't work. Rainer looked absolutely you know amazing. And while Rainer did the last five minutes of that game because he was winning, I will just say like that game excited me for Trap's potential. Okay, like I gave Trap two games, but I actually kind of wanted to do the spicy four zero. Now I'm like, oh no, okay, Trap will take games. But um, while it, it encourages me to think that way, it doesn't encourage me to think, oh, Trap has this series. <laughs> uh, it still looks like it's in Rainer's hands. Yeah, I mean, uh, it felt like Trap was outplayed there after the mid game there from Rainer. Certainly had an, a rocky start to the game, but uh, outplayed from there onwards. It was cool to see Rainer just tighten up and make no mistakes, or at least very few. Let's get into this game in the top right here, currently up in the series from Clash, the Italian Stallion, Little Caesar, it is Rainer. In the bottom left, there's the red Protoss. He is Trap. Zombie Grub, you know I'm gonna miss the most in between seasons here as we, uh, after the series, gonna go into hibernation until Dreamhack Winter. I'm gonna miss the royalty-free butt rock. <laughs> I'm gonna miss it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be really like, at the start, I, it was one of those things. You know how there are, there are movies out there like The Room where you, you, you like ironically like the movie because it's funny and you like to laugh at it, mm -hmm. but then you become an un unironic giant fan of it. Like you will actually follow everything the room related. You will go to the room like uh, screenings and midnight in the cinemas and that sort of thing. I've become that for the royalty free butt rock that we have in the DreamHack broadcasts. I'm now an unironic fan of it. Yep. I get you. This is you where we're at. Some sick tunes during the break though, right? Like unironically. Oh yeah. FAD. 
in chat, man. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I learned that emote from this Twitch chat, so thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's one of my favorites already, um, the Peppy D. Um, but yes, like there's been some sick synth wave in between uh, in, in, in the break screens. So yeah, good yeah. stuff, DreamHack. Big fan. I was the player, I'd, I'd ask for that, you know? Like we can't get, uh, you know, Skrillex while the, the player is walking through the crowd, people trying to slap their hands, <laughs> whatever, but we can get synth wave during a player intro. <laughs> Excuse me, Zombie Grub, that sounds like a copyrighted artist. <laughs> doesn't it though, doesn't it? No. Hmm. Uh, you know, this oh. game would be paying close attention to actually when that warp gate starts, because that would be, I think, the biggest reason that Rainer had those delayed uh, spore crawlers. It's all fun and games to be like, oh, he was in a ZBT mindset, but that's a, a pretty big thing that the Overlord is looking at. So uh, perhaps once again, going for the warp gate first. And that's also going to put question and, and doubt in Rainer's mind, right? Because whenever he sees it, he can't truly believe it. But uh, it looks like Rainer had to take that third hatch as his natural, right? Perhaps did the uh, fast probe scout probe block. And that sometimes mm -hmm. can also put fear in the Zerg's hearts that you're going to be uh, adapting them, <laughs> which, you know, it's just scary <laughs> even it's kind of been figured out. This is actually the warp gate into Stargate. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was, I was like, yeah, we have to pay attention to it. And here it is. So Rainer, does he actually believe it? Or is he like, no, nah, I'm going to get a spore crawler. I'm on you. Uh, we will see. It, it feels like the you have a little bit more time on this map to react. Like his spores were so close to being in on time for the uh, for the first Oracle from Trap, but just not quite there. I think on Eternal Empire, this rush distance from uh, you know from point A to eight to to point B, you will have that spore up in time if you're going for the blind spores for Rainer usually. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean it is another one of those bamboozles, right? Just like Game One, the warp gate first before the Stargate and. You are left wondering as the Zerg, what is the opening here? It looks like for the Overlord, it's Twilight Council opening. But of course, we know with our with our with our caster hacks here, it's not the case. Yeah, yeah exactly. And yeah, some people in chat are like, "What? Why is this such a big deal?" I mean, it really is. Like the build for a Stargate, and that is like a typical you know macro Stargate, is to go for it first and then the warp gate. But I mean, it's not like it is the biggest deal if this. Warp gate doesn't deceive Rainer, right? Like it's it's probably the Oracle at the end of the day, unless it's proxy, doesn't usually get much, regardless if it's uh, in ten or not, because queens are also pretty good at defending it if they're in position. And this last game was shown like it was no spore crawler and no queen, so it really did suck. Uh, this game Indeed. you do have Rainer getting a spore crawler in both the well in one saturated mineral line, his main, and then just queens at his other saturated mineral line, right? And then filling up his third now that it's finally on the way. Yeah, the third is where a lot of drones are here. The, the queens are in position, though, as you mentioned. We got the we got the Oracle heading into the main base where there is a spore, where there is a queen. Does find a drone, but of course not getting six like it did last game. As I mentioned, this map's a lot longer, so you are still going to have a little bit more time on those spores to finish up. Third base being target fired here by the Lings, but Reyna not going to find anything more than a few hit points here with those Lings. Mm, nice check on the Adepts as well. Ooh. You can shade through, but to a very perfect Wamp surround that. by the Lings. Very nice. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Rainer. Unfortunate for Trap, very fortunate for the Italian Zerg. Gets himself a nice catch there. All right, so Rainer still with map control. The, Zerg, the Protoss has been removed from his side of the map for the most part, apart from, of course, the constant threat of Oracles. And we do have the Lings pushing on forward here, and it's basically gut checking Trap, making sure that his third is nicely defended. Nothing's out of position. Nothing's outside of that little nest between the Nexus and the Pylon. Ooh, this might be too many Lings. Does he bring an orc? Yeah, he has an orc on. In vicinity, yes, too, actually. So while the adepts die, not much else will go down. Nexus, unlikely to die, but hey, even the shield battery having to be remade would have been kind of annoying. Especially because the oracles, if they're defending, they're not scouting. You know, his rainer just flooding me. Well, we know he's not. Actually, a little bit supply blocked after losing that overlord. So, hmm. only a mistake there. It's actually kind of Ooh. partial supply block. <laughs> Tried to get that, uh, that, that stalker there. Rainer's been doing a good job of trading well with his lings, getting a couple of depths here, a couple of depths there. Just for the cost of a handful of lings, always nice for you as a Zerg. Double Oracle's going to one-shot drones in. They come for a bit of a drive-by. One is a little bruised from earlier. Oh, Rainer with no queen here, so he's just going to have to micro those drones around, but that's not going to be effective enough. Going to lose oh, five drones with that run-by. Nicely done by Trap. Oh, never mind. Excuse me. Gosh. Good stuff. Good Oracle control make look like it's just the default. You know, we watch Classic do it too, and you're just like, meh, I, I could do that. I dare you guys try and do that. You're going <laughs> to be like, I'm just going to glide. It's going to be so easy. Just watch me. And then you're going to be like, uh, 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 constant stuttering. At least this happens with me anyways. Um, anywho, Trap's got target stuff. That's what I'm trying to say. 
It is good Stargate stuff indeed, Zombie Grub. And thank you for uh, putting a, a sound effect in my brain for whenever I watch you micro <laughs> observe, uh, you know, oracles on your stream. Uh, we did have a double robo as well go down for Trap on his side of the map. So he's looking to pump out those mortals nice and quickly here. As Reyna is going pretty hard into Roach Ravager next. There's a lot of Zergs will want to do it this part of the game just to make their army a little bit more powerful. So obviously a lot of immortals. Uh, obviously Robotics Bay gives you a lot of anti-Roach Ravager countermeasures. Uh, Reyna is also throwing in Ling Bane. Last game he, he just didn't really go Banelings at all which has kind of been the flavor of the month right now for Zerg, because they like to go Lurkers, so, you know, Roach, Roach, Ravager, Hydra, Lurker instead. Yeah. But the Baneling is a problem for a guy with a lot of Robo units, not a lot of Gateway units. Yeah, it's, it can be uh, tricky, but you know, I feel like Parting did a good job of kind of uh, proving how good this can be. He wasn't maybe the designer of this, right? But Stalker Colossus mm -hmm. has really come back from a time period oh, where yeah. Stalkers weren't even used, and Colossus were like, what are they? You know, what makes them? It's actually being a very strong composition, especially in good hands, which Trap definitely has uh, a lot of skill. So I, I believe in his potential once you get to those Colossus. He does have Robotics Bay, but he wants to pump out Immortals first. And I think seeing the amount of Roach Ravager was a little concerning. It's actually not Rainer's true, you know, potential here. It's actually kind of like more of a poke, but perhaps let me take that very seriously. Gets the gateway here in the natural, opens up the natural a little bit as well, but of course Trap will plug that up post haste. This Nexus is in a bit of trouble. Not a lot of hit points on that, and that is quite a few lings, even without their attack upgrades being ready. That's a cancel. Oop! Oh, don't want to lose the oracles. I mean, they, they're... Presence, uh, you know, in the last game, or the lack thereof, actually, after they got sniped, wasn't the biggest deal, but it is just so much nicer for the pros to actually know where the army is, especially with a guy like Rain, you know, it's going to be split up in multiple directions. So it's all cool to be, you know, getting drones with those oracles, but at least one's got to stay alive. On to Colossus we go. So, you know, I, I want to note that Trap's economy actually was pretty darn good. I think he, um, yeah, he delayed his robo quite a fair bit compared to some other opportunities. You know, if you wanted to follow up with like a plus one, uh, double immortal or something like that. He actually waited until, yeah, he was pretty much ready to go into Colossus. So he got his three bases up pretty nice. He was on 66 probes on three bases when Raynor was also on 66 drones. But as we can see, what happens is that Raynor actually explodes. Five bases, almost 100 workers, and Ooh. Trap uh, just had to cancel his fourth base again. So you know, the economy is about to, uh, it's already hit its stride, and now Raynor's army is about to grow really large. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of economies hitting their stride, I feel like Rainers has been uh, strutting down the street for quite a while right now. 94 drones. He hasn't got that rich vest being gassed just yet. He just takes it now, but uh, he's definitely going to look towards that. He just made 30 banelings as well with baneling speed about to finish. He's going to have a lot of those suicide balloons ready for that Protoss army. Big surround there on those charge blocks. They're going to go down for sure. And Trap, he's already been making Colossi, so he has his anti baneling countermeasures like the Colossi, Force Fields, Blink Stalker. Huge here. And in comes some Banelings and that Dropper Lord Trap. No reaction. Oh, a little bit late on it. Going to lose four probes there, but could have been way worse. Yeah, it could have. Rainer just pulls back. It might come back again later. And when plus two is done, it'll be really deadly. But that's a ways off. Rainer maybe trying to set up a bit of a surround. And it actually oh. catches a Colossus. No, it does not. Good War Prism save. Yeah, that Prism in the nick of time there. Grabbing that Colossus, putting it back with all of its friends. Rainer getting a lot more Lings out to round out his army and max out here. Now, his army is pretty terrifying, mainly because of the Banes. He's got a lot of Banelings here. 27 more on the way, and he's already got 28. So the 56 Banes about to kick on in. That is very, very scary. 55 Banes. I am terrified for when those Banelings arrive as he's setting up a flank from both sides. Zombie Grub, does Trap have the energy for this support field? Oh my god, the Prism's got to be perfect already. He actually let a couple of Banelings through on the way oh. on top of those sentries. All the sentries not quite going down. Many still left over. Force field still available as the Banelings actually get kind of tucked into the initial force field, but are able to roll away. That was almost uh, that was almost every single sentry down, actually. That was very close to being deadly, but Trap is able to hold on. The power of good force fields. Yeah, really nice force fields, and he still has a lot of Stalkers left over as well, so he could take a fight if the Ravagers come to join in. And this Colossus count is huge. He's got five or six Colossus here in this army. In comes Raynor again. Trap even on the right side with a couple of Archons and a Prism here, making sure that Raynor takes damage when he comes up that ramp. Trap's army supply is quite huge and very, very powerful. He's got plus two attack. He hasn't started plus three yet. He hasn't had the gas, but he does have so many units. This is still a really, really dangerous moment for Raynor. It's extremely dangerous when his bailing count was low. I'm actually surprised he uh, he was uh, against Trap just that second before. Like, I, I thought he was going to run back, build a bunch of banelings, and he finally has, but he was down like 
Less than 20 is actually kind of a scary point for Rainer. Now he's back up to the 40s, into the 50s. Oh. He's using a lot of them on the Archons. Force Souls are trying to save the day, but from the left side, there's not enough Force Souls to actually save the Colossus. Lots of them getting injured. A last minute split trying to help them out, but there's still so many reinforcements here from Rainer that are probably going to clean this up. Oh, uh, maybe. The DT's definitely going to help a lot. Oh. And there are some Stalkers coming from the left side. Catching these Ravagers. The DT's did so much damage there. Rainer actually getting routed in the end as his army retreats back up to the high ground with that third base. DT's coming on in. Going to grab that spore and then start working on the drones in this hatchery. Oh Rainer's reinforcements running right into the meat grinder here. The Colossi damaged but not dead. Still doing full damage output here with their laser beams. This is still deadly for Rainer. Losing so many drones as well. Rainer has so many minerals and gas in the bank, but he can't quite clear everything up. The four Colossus is just barely enough to help handle the link reinforcements, and the DT and Stalker combination of warp ins was barely enough to push back Ooh. the Roaches, but finally Rainer's able to oh. use that bank, and finally the Colossus go down. I was right, just took a you know hot second there. That was an extremely close battle, and if Trap had gotten another warp in, if he didn't have to unwarp and pick up his Colossus and move his warp prism, I do wonder what would have happened. Oh man, Trap was just so titillatingly close to breaking Rainer there, but not quite. In comes these plus two attack veins. Goodbye probes. Whatever remained there in the natural. Not a ton of mining here anyway, but still just exacerbating the lead here as Rainer holds on, weathers the storm. Not literally, the were only high Templar there, but he weathers the storm. And now once again, he has got control of this game. Yeah, he absolutely does. I mean, he really just needed a second for his reinforcements to kick in. He just needed to get everything together, everything collected, and yeah, make bailings, of course, but it was getting scary there Ooh. for a second, but Rainer still has a good bank as he maxes out. Trap's gonna buy some time with some DTs, and they did help in that fight, but can they really buy him enough time to, to bridge the supply gap? Well, they're, they're one of those things that's better than nothing, but unfortunately Trap needs better than a little bit with these DTs. They are quite expensive and he really doesn't have a whole lot of gas to play with. So everything that he decides to do with these gas at this point needs to really pay off for him if he wants a chance in this game. He is down almost 80 supply here, Zombie Grub. This is a devastating position to be in as the Protoss after losing your presence on the map, having not really any presence or harassment out there anymore. He's even taken away some map vision here, getting rid of those observers, pushing him away from the watchtower. There's the prison, but it's back on Trap's side of the map. And he's doing some Colossus drop tactics here just to try and shave into that army counter the Zerg. But there's so much army here. I don't know how Trap holds CG. This is going to have to be a miracle from him. Yeah, I guess uh, through a choke's the start. But even with a bunch of Colossus, they, uh, the sheer numbers are looking to push through. Heading into two mineral lines at once and potentially finding the charge lots with the Banelings. Not quite, but Rainer is maxed out and pushing everything down Trap's throat. All the probes going down. The Immortals even getting caught. The Banelings are on the hunt for those charge lots. Trap is like, please, no, oh my god. They actually <laughs> ended up just finding the Archons again instead. I don't think Rainer cares about efficiency here with Banelings against Archons. He knows he's in a really good spot, but of course, Trap is trying to trade as well as he can. He is holding on for dear life. Charge lot flank here from Trap, actually quite nice. Trying to cut off the retreat of Rainer. <laughs> really nice catch here from, from Trap, oh my god. Rainer feels on move command and not looking at his army there in the middle of the map. Could have taken an extreme damage. In fact, he still does, but Rainer has a bank and we are seeing the army units being replenished. We do have 10 Corruptors on the way. Great Aspire about to finish. 11 Banelings, Roaches, Ravages have all been reinforced, and we do have Reyna still maintaining an almost 50 supply lead. It is a lot in workers. It always has been, right? Every single fight they took was actually True. about a 30 supply difference in that army. Now it's actually very even, so that might not bode well for Trap, but we'll see what his positioning can do, what his flash can do. Damn. More probes going down. Trap is absolutely all in. He's gonna try and make this work, but now even Corruptors are available, and he hasn't remade any of his stalkers. Yeah, and those Corruptors are going to slowly but surely get rid of those Colossi, which are the main splash damage here for Trap, as the Archons are going to get pushed back by the Roaches. In come more Corruptors. Oh, he's got some Disruptors here. Could maybe get rid of that ground army, and the Archons maybe can push back these Corruptors. This is such a weird moment right here in this game, with Trap taking extreme damage on his side of the map. It does still feel like he's got such an uphill battle, though, against Reyna, who's just got every single lead. Uh, just waiting for Reyna to collect his army. The Immortals have their shields popped. The Disruptors are out of shots, and the Archons can only do so much to help out. Once again, Trap identifying the lack of Overseer to bring in some emergency DTs. But while it might feel like he is on the edge of breaking Reyna, of gaining that momentum, I don't think he truly is, right? At best, he kills the base, but Reyna still has a couple of mining bases left over. There's his reinforcements, and that should be mm -hmm. Should indeed. He's got detection here, which is the only thing he was really lacking. In come the DTs with some drone damage, but they have 40 drones to kill ZG if they want to actually tie up the economy here. And even then, Reyna already has enough army on the map to end this game. GG! Reyna takes a 2-0 lead in this series.
a beautiful game by both players, but I'm going to do that weird thing and actually highlight the loser a little bit more. Go Drops for it. control over against those banelings. It's just, it's just a, you know, absolutely absurd, man. The banelings have got to be in that surround. They got to actually get that positioning. And when he, you know, denied them at first, I was like, oh, oh, like maybe this could happen. But of course, Rainer is a beast. He had that bank. He had the reinforcements. Trap still played a fantastic style. And I am looking forward to the next games. But I have to wait a little while as we are going to go to a break. When we come back, it is game three. G'day, StarCraft fans. Welcome back to the DreamHack Masters Full Season Finals Grand Final. Really rolls off the tongue when you put it like that. <laughs> I am Maynard, and with me is Zombie Grub, and we are going into game three of this final. Trap yet to do any damage here, Zombie. Yeah, you know, it's it's really difficult to watch these games, honestly, because I feel like Trap is doing some really mm. good things. The first game, it was kind of more of that strategy, the whole surprise element. It seemed to work. Rainer was surprised at least twice didn't actually end up getting the game. Second game, he's like, well, maybe I'll try to match your economy, play, you know, the three bases pretty quickly, skip that robo for a time, and then we'll we'll battle it out with Colossus. And then, you know, you think five Colossus counter Banelings. Nope, bad if they're positioned correctly. So I really right. don't know what I would tell Trap uh, <laughs> to do. Um, but we are on submarine and maybe he's got uh, another tricky build up his sleeve. Well, this is the man we're talking about up here, top left. Unfortunately, not enough force fields to stay alive in game two. Let's see what he can do on this map in game three. It is Jinair Greenwings, trap. Where is Greenwings' throne doing? 
I think I might know, but uh, Ooh, let's pop naughty. this guy in the bottom right here. In the bottom right, he sent a drone out and he's got that pool first. He is Rainer. I do believe we are about to see what some would call an offensive hatchery zombie grub. Hmm, I do suspect that's true. Now, Trap is gonna figure this out when the hatchery gets slapped down, basically. So then you saw the drone, I would say, right? Um, unfortunately, there's not much else. Like, you can be like, oh, you're just making wings? So, okay, I see what it is. This, you know, was a thing that a lot of Zerg players were doing um, years ago. I mean, I even remember this, like, back in Pro League. You know, a lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of Zergs like doing this. But, and Trap, you know, has played against pretty much all iterations of the hatch block, but it definitely still messes up the Protoss build. It, it does put things, well, maybe not in favor, like, math-wise, depending on how Trap does deal with this. It puts, like, the pacing, you know, in, in kind of in favor of Rainer. He's taking control. Yeah. This is one of those uh, one of those moves to getting your opponent's head a little bit. You're trapped trying to fight fire with fire as well, getting the pylon block in the natural. But Zerg's been taking their natural at third base for the past few months now with that pro block. So it's completely fine for Reyna. So Ling's head across the map. The hatchery is about to, uh, you know, get closer and closer to that finish up. And usually the Zerg will do something like cancel the hatchery, drop an Evo chamber there to get a few more hit points on that block and continue to continue to drain the Protoss's time and take that natural away for even longer. Yep. The uh... Ling's still annoying here. Right, the second Zealot, I mean, he doesn't necessarily have to get the second Zealot, but, I mean, in combination of, you know, dealing with this, uh, the Lings, not tearing on a gateway, and trying to help out with the hatchery, it's like, gosh, I really don't want to make a Zealot, but I kind of got to make another Zealot. Uh, another Chrono also on the gateway. I mean, this is very frustrating. If the Lings getting in wouldn't be the end of the world, but you also don't want to let him in either. Eventually, mm -hmm. Trap might send all of his, uh, maybe Zealots and his Adept across the map to at least force Rainer to make more Lings, but uh, Rainer even actually took him the main. God forbid he gets a probe, God forbid! Oh, God. Very annoying here from Rainer. I mean, how do you feel about the fact that he let that hatchery finish? Uh, it, it, like, mm. oh, he's got Lings on both sides of the Adept! Uh, he's in! This is awkward. The Adept going down, that was a uh, that was a scout, and that was a little bit more harassment that would have forced me out again. Maybe more Lings. Oh, these Zealots will usually is... do it. Oh, this creep no. tumor needs to die. This creep tumor needs to die. A trap needs to get rid of this. Oh, he's gonna get it. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. That would have been, that would have been extremely. Yeah, that would have been extremely frustrating there for trap as he's a uh, little ways off of having any detection to clear up that creep tumor. And while well, this hatchery is getting low, it's still not dealt with. There's, there's a queen here protecting her babies, forcing them back away from the gateway units. Rain has been darting in the main, into the natural, in the main, in the natural. Meanwhile, on his side of the map, he's starting to drone again. Uh, of course, he has been on a very low drone count up until this point. So. You know, by not pulling the probes to deal with this, he does not interrupt his economy that much. And it's also maybe a bit of like a bluff problem where it's like, now nah, you're going to cancel it. Now nah, you're going to cancel it. Now nah, you're going to cancel it. And maybe Raynor did mean to cancel it. He was thinking about it, but then went, oh, you're not even pulling the probes. Who knows about that? But while his economy might not have been interrupted in the main, it, it turns worse. His economy oh does now get severely interrupted in the natural because he didn't just nip that in the bug. And the creep tumor also got placed down here. The second creep tumor from this queen actually made it placed down here to the south. I think the creep is still in range of blocking. It actually might just slightly be out of range of blocking the nexus. No, it is. It is actually going to block it. So that is so annoying for trap. Oh my god, he's got a stargate up, but Reyna actually scouted it as well. So it feels like there isn't anything going well for trap in this game at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Ends up, um, you know, hindsight twenty twenty, but I think he's really going to regret not taking care of that hatchery. A uh, bunch of lings are on the way. Speed did just finish, but maybe in the nick of time. Lings actually don't stop the adept. Maybe to that cranny Ooh. there, though. And that's uh, maybe a couple of drones or zero. That's cool. I think it will <laughs> I guess eventually. That's cool. I mean, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so he is, you know, I'm finding a not lovely position here with his adepts. It is going to deny mining, and he is starting to, uh, you know, find a bit of damage at least against the lings. But you're right, not much drone damage, and the adepts will slowly die. Rainer can afford to be a little inefficient here as his work account is uh, starting to get a little higher, but uh, not so much. You know, neither player is really swimming in cash at the moment. The Oracle mm. finally coming back, and that was the second Oracle dropping the revelation there, not the first one. So it took a long time to try to deal with that. Yeah, and he's tried even the place down as his nexus. I'd like watching his. Oh, drills. that's canceled. Oh my god. Oh Sorry, no. This is, no. <laughs> After losing the first two games and this is the third game, I don't want to know what the fourth game looks like, man. Like. I, this is a ladder game. He's tapped out already. As soon as they depth yeah, do damage, he's like, that. I'm out of here. If this wasn't Ugh. the DreamHack Finals, I'm with you. I, th I think he actually taps at this point. Um, but uh, he's going to try and make 
make lemonade out of these lemons. <laughs> yeah. That way. He's definitely not in a good spot here. Does still have double Oracle. He's still a threat to the drone lines. Has a lot of work to do. Reyna doesn't have a ton of anti-air or a lot of creep. So defending against the Oracle is a little tough. I mean, it, this is definitely a tough game for the Protoss, but it isn't like, you know, the, the numbers don't say tap out immediately. The, the feeling might, but the numbers don't. And as you finally get some sick damage done, both Oracles live, that's wow. going to give you a little bit more hope. That's the, oh God, finally. All right, now I'm back mm -hmm. in this mentally because that's yeah, Oracle. the actual Four numbers Oracle. are not bad. And, uh, you know, Rainer didn't get that fast for third hatch, even though he severely delayed Trap's natural. The probe count wasn't actually truly indicative of the economy because Trap with 35 workers isn't, you know, correctly mining off of one base, but yeah, the numbers aren't spiraling out of control here. So Trap, if you can get back into like, I guess a good headspace, I would say, um, there is that potential. And if you can do more damage with the quad oracles, the quint oracles, like <laughs> yeah. maybe. Yeah, pent oracle. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Th this is, uh, you know, you were talking about things not spiraling out of control. What is spiraling out of control is the oracle count. And I kind of like that Trap's getting weird here. I love it. Uh, this is how you upset a, a, a Zerg that no doubt has not played it against this a ton lately, especially by someone that's as good at Oracle Control as Trap. Not a ton of those dudes out there in the, uh, you know, out there on the ladder. Yeah. And the Queens, you know, that lack of creep as well makes it tough to defend against the Oracles, against those two Oracles, as I mentioned, when those first two Oracles rolled in. Now that it's five, yeesh, that's tough. Rainer also, I mean, not only was he not droning maybe as much as he could be because he had to deal with the Adepts, he also made a bunch of Roaches that I think he was planning on moving across the map with because you know, the, the queen numbers could also kind of boost this creep and suddenly you're right there in submarine after all. But these roaches are now looking kind of useless. That's eight roaches that could have uh. been so many other things. Queen's actually taking this fight. Do manage to get two of the oracles and I don't think they're gonna get the third one. Not quite. Well, this is actually, you know, this dive from Trap was expensive. He did lose the oracles, but he also reset the queen count. Oh, he's about no. to pop up and have three again, but here comes the attack from Rainer. He's had enough. He's gonna try and just kill Trap right here with his ground army. Yeah, you know, I thought this would be a mistake from Rainer, but actually just getting out of the vision of the Oracles. The Oracles have used up all of their energy killing queens, but they could have been back here helping against at least the Ravagers. This makes it a little bit more scary than I thought it was going to be, and Rainer is going to be glad that at least they're doing something. They're going to tear down a some x Corps, apparently, maybe grab a Sentry or a Shield Battery, but man, yeah, Trap had, uh, you know, four Oracles with, with full energy, or a lot of energy. I don't think this is a problem much at all. Yeah, that one Oracle that was on top of those Ravages does get a couple of Ravages, but is now out of juice. Force fields from, from Trap, keeping it alive here against the Lings. The Lings are the scariest part if they can get in, but there is an Overcharged Shield Battery and an Archon. Trap actually responding to this, reacting to this very well here. Dang, a little bit scary. If he had actually let Lings in to get us around, that, that's, uh, that, that could be problematic, but didn't let that happen. Might have lost that X-Core, but uh, is going to be replacing it. Eventually, <laughs> he's actually going to go for pure mm -hmm. charge, uh, you know, Archon. So I guess he doesn't have to be in such a hurry to replace it. Third Nexus is going to be delayed. That is a nice pickoff for Rainer, who is up eight workers on his three bases, finally with all of his gas as well. And now we can kind of keep tabs on how that army's moving. And the Oracles have actually done a bit of creep damage as well, but it feels like Reyna, even with having his queen count reset, he's continuing to produce queens from every hatchery, and he really is going to be able to work on that creep again, even with a few, a bunch of them being taken down here. One Oracle, not on hold position, gets pulled into queen there, doesn't want that fight, pulls back, and Trap does have a scary army now. Reyna is starting to amass some units. He do, it actually has a few overlords finishing up and has a bit more money to start throwing into more unit production, but not a ton. Can Trap actually take a good fight here with this army? He does have Archons, does have Immortals, does have Oracles, not with a ton of energy though. Mm, there's a potential with nine more Roaches on the way and an excellent Sport Crawler readjustment. I'm not sure, but we'll see what he can do. Uh, two Immortals, two Archons. Definitely don't scoff at that. Even the Oracles could get in on the action if the Queens are gone, but oh no, it's two Sport Crawlers. The Oracles can't do anything much at all. But the Charge Lots might be able to, already finding one Queen. He gets too many roaches though, and the reinforcements can be coming up pretty quickly here for mm. Rainer. I don't know. Yeah, it feels like Rainer's got this way too many roaches, and roaches with the uh, with ravages on the back end are gonna be very, very deadly through this army. The reinforcement charge lots pushing the roaches back. He's losing a lot of hit points on these roaches, running out of creep here as well. If the Protoss can push this position, they're gonna have a lovely spot here. Still has that prism, trap gonna move it forward as the spores die. And he's gonna be reinforcing Protoss units right in front of the Zerg's face. Rainer running out of money, running out of lava. Uh -oh. Maybe he's actually going to win with the momentum. Just a few too many units. And then Rainer 
can't get any more Ravagers. He can't really buy the time because he got a few more, but that's probably going to be it. Roaches on the way. Queens are just being made. And they're trying to go after that War Prism. That would maybe save the day, but I don't think it's going to happen. Trap is microing that. Going to bring it forward. Going to save it as the Queen passes out. And that's uh, War Prism might not ever get close to the Corrosive Vials of the Force Bows as they are. That's it. I think the Trap's got it. Oh, oh Ravagers. Oh, oh Prism. Nearly getting Vile down. The Immortals, though, is still just doing so much damage. Oh, the two Archons quite healthy. Oh, Spore coming in for that War Prism, but it's going to get the Warp in charge lots, and while the Prism does take more damage, it will not go down. The Traps army continuing to barrel through the Zerg's natural, and Reyna has finally been broken. Uh, this last Queen's going to go for the kill, but only after three more charge offs are here. Only after Rainer only gave away 21 drones. Even if you were to hold, it would be a sketchy hold indeed, as the natural also goes down. Trap, I mean, I just applaud his mentality, man. His natural was so delayed. The depths didn't seem to do very much, and then his oracles finally found some success. He played a very wacky game very well. I guess it's not quite over, as without reinforcements, those four <laughs> big units look like they could be surrounded. It's a little bit dangerous for them, but Trap is on three bases. Yeah, three bases, 50 probes, and he, it's going to be hard for Raynan to get off this ramp. These immortals are just holding that door. In fact, it looks like they're about to be recalled if they want to be, but, uh, I mean, is Trap actually okay with these dying? He's going to take a lot more Ravages out. He's also cleaned up a lot of the main base. Raynan still has uh, Roach Tech, because the Roach Tech is by the third base to the north of his natural. But losing his natural, being on three bases mining now, Bailey is just very rough for Reyna. And we've seen some miracle comebacks from this kid, but I don't know if it's going to happen in this game. Trap is holding all the cards. And the Warp Prism is going to keep Reyna at home and just always threaten to do damage. I mean, Reyna, if he's not going to keep him at home, then Reyna's going to take more economic damage, right? And that's actually the option he's, he's chosen here. Going for a desperate counterattack, trying to find him without Immortals, which he is finding, but the Archons are morphed in. The shield batteries might just end up finishing up here with an overcharge. That back one still might be available. Rainer's got a decent army supply, and Trap is actually going to have to take this seriously. He's flying back home with the War Prism, and Immortal still isn't out here. The Shield Battery only just finished, but nah, it's not going to work out. GG. Trap fights back in um, one of the weirdest games we've seen in a while. <laughs> Yeah, that might, that might win Weirdest Game of the Playoffs Award, I think. Uh, I've, I've seen some crazy games, of course, but that was that was just PVZ on Submarine when the start of your game is your natural getting blocked by a hatchery, and then you go into five oracles. It just got wet and wild, that PVZ, with Trap coming out on top as the dust settles, and it's cool to see him get some damage done in this series as it felt like the first two games were just all Reyna. Even in the beginning of game one, where Trap got a dozen drones with the oracles, that was like it for the good things that Trap managed to achieve in that game. As Reyna just recovered so well, it's like he, he got pushed over and did the sickest fall of all time. He just rolled, flipped, and, and then just sprung back up on his feet and you know struck a pose with his finger guns, and he was completely fine. And then game two, he was just ahead, 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 and closed it out. Game three there, really wild, really crazy. Looked like Reyna had it, but then Trap was the one to actually recover in the mid game and have that finishing blow. And that's awesome. That gives me a lot of hope for this series being a lot closer than we initially thought. Yeah. I got to wonder how often Rainer finds himself in that position, you know? Like, if we go back and analyze that replay, I'm sure we can find a lot of points where, you know, the Rainer might actually have been like a little, huh, now what do I do? And for pros, it happens pretty darn quickly. But every time you go, huh, now what do I do? It's actually, it's really bad compared to the guy who was at least as a plan, right? I mean, Trap probably wasn't planning on building five oracles that game, but he was like, that's what I'm going to do. And he stuck with it and it worked. So I, I feel like that's probably one of the, the things that happened is that Rainer might hatch block, but maybe he doesn't finish. He doesn't get a queen. He doesn't delay it as long as he does. So then he's like, oh wait, now do I, what do I do? What do I have to be worried about? And um, yeah, I just don't know if it was the cleanest follow-up, but it was uh, for, I guess, trap side. The five oracles ended up being the right call. And that is, that's funny to me because five oracles is kind of funny, but um, it's not the first time actually that we've seen no. a lot of oracles do a lot of work. We, we usually see less than five, but we've definitely seen more than five more than once in StarCraft 2. And uh, those five oracles, I mean, did they, they actually did a fair bit of damage there for Trap at the beginning of the game, even though a few of them died when he dove for those queens, just trying to erase the queen from the video game. I feel like the main story there for Trap, if I, you know, wanted to look at that game and have a TLDR, is that Trap just reacted really well to what was happening after the start of that game. You know, the, the big threat to him was the Roach Ravager, and he had himself a lockdown natural. He had himself the right units to fight, and he also had an Archon when he absolutely needed it. His 16 Lings were just about to yeah. bust through the uh, the natural and just make him tap. 
you know, it, it felt like he was reacting and he was, you know, kind of uncharacteristically for a lot of Reyna's opponents, one step ahead after that yeah. certain phase of the game. He's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm reacting to what you're trying to do before you're ready for it. And that was uh, beautiful stuff. You know, a, a game that just basically solidifies the reason why Trap is here in this final, because he deserves to be. Yes, he does. I mean, that was a wacky game. I guess people will argue that it wasn't, um, it wasn't the type of game that we usually say is in Rainer's like extreme favor, right? He wasn't on his lurkers, wasn't on his banelings. It was that scrappier, weirder game. But I mean, that's, uh, I feel like it's, you know, sometimes more difficult for the Protoss, uh, but for him, he didn't make it look easy, but he definitely made it work. <laughs> it was his uh, first one on the board. It's so crazy what could have happened, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Like imagine, I, I feel like even imagine if Rainer hadn't done an attack at all. What if those were his drones instead of that Roach Ravager attack, right? Even though it got some mm. done. Um, I think then he holds the Immortal Archon push because that was pretty close until those reinforcements came in. That was a that was a crazy game. I loved it. We're going to Ice and Chrome. And I think Rainer might have been uh, a little, little slaps back for trying something a little bit weird. Yeah, I mean, that was Trap's map pick, so obviously he's feeling a little bit more confident on Submarine. And Reyna has picked this one, as most Zergs will in a series. Ice and Chrome has been selected here. We've gone from the smallest map to the biggest one. Let's get in there and see what map four looks like. Currently, Reyna still, of course, in map advantage. 2-1 against Trap. Let's swing on in, friends, and have a look. In the bottom left here, finally getting a point on the board. Can he get two and tie it up? He is Trap. In the top right for Team Clash, he is Rainer. Oh, this is my favorite one. Yeah. What That's the, uh, the sound. main tunes. That's right, the main tunes. Well, you know what? If I uh, if I get slapped back with those uh, with those with those nasty copyright things, might have to make my own music and just jam out to that. And those few synth bands that also don't care about copyright. <laughs> yeah. They're nice. Well, not co the copyright's not the right word. The uh, the, the Twitch Steam. song, Steam. yeah, that's it. Thank you. Oof. Gotcha. I, guys, I was floating out in the ocean on a, on a life paper <laughs> and Zombie Grub swung by in a giant galleon. So, I was pretty <laughs> casual about it though, right? Yeah. I was like, maybe I'll help you. All right, okay, here, here you go. <laughs> you thought about it. You were like, ahoy matey, you in trouble out there. I'm like, yes, pull me up, please. And down came the rope. Thank you, Zombie Grub. Uh, you're a great friend. Yeah, I tried. Ah, oh, gosh. Um, so yeah, not uh, too much to talk about here. No fast delay. And uh, once again, be looking towards that warp gate timing specifically. I mean, another thing that, that Trap is kind of uh, presuming, you know, as you do in PBZ, is that a second Overlord won't be on the other side of your base. So one always goes to the perfect pillar, as I think the Aussies have coined it, either you or Pig. And then. Uh, another one can go to, for instance, Trap's right side, but if it does, then it's not here, as you know, Mapu just pointed out, which mm -hmm. that would be looking for, like, cannon rushes. Not that I think we're really expecting them, but, you know, Rainer also uh, drone scouted against Clem for two raxes, so... Or uh, TY, actually, it was TY. So he might just be, like, a little bit, you know, cautious about that. And also gets pushed a little far forward to see where the Adept might be coming in, so... Anyways, just want to point that out because Trap has been, you know, always pretty reliably putting that tech up into the main base without super worried about being scouted. It's always the the, the surface level scouts that are that what Rainer's doing, right? The Ling that sees the Oracle flying by, or the warp gate timing with this Overlord. And speaking of builds here, we do have a bit of a switch up for Trap. He's been showing us Stargate time and time again in the series for three games in a row. This time it is going to be a Twilight Council opening, so this could actually be that uh, that Adept printer game that we want in every series in the PVC. Mm -hmm. It might be. Now, might be. because of the way the warp gate has been used in the previous game, so there's not really any way for Rainer to confirm that. And I think he's kind of caught on as well. Like, I need to be extra cautious. I can't just assume based off of that. A uh, lingating would be fantastic, but definitely not supposed to happen. And uh, we'll see if he is taking anyone's off of gas. He isn't, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's not. Okay, yeah. So he is going to go for the Dark Shrine, Archon Drop. And uh, that could be a surprise. I mean, you know, eventually you kind of do away with the thought of an Oracle because the timing has passed. But then, yeah, there is that thought. Adept or Archon Drop? Adept or Archon Drop? 
Well, we will see. We will see. So, uh, you know, Reyna has to make that choice against Archons and against Adepts. You don't want to drone too heavily. You also want to make sure your Roche Warren is well-timed as well. So if Reyna's feeling super scared, he'll cut drones before 40 or around 40 and, and uh, just make units. And mm. it's not exactly how you want to react against the Archon drop, though, you right? You want to have a few more workers than that. Cutting corners is pretty important at this level. So yeah. you got to make the right call here as Reyna. So... He did just dip in a little bit to see the gas timings. He'd already seen the fourth, but he wanted to check the third gas, I think, as well. Um, you know, with a typical Stargate, it's like 3.30 gases, I believe. So um, I'm not sure if this is the, the common timing for the Dark Shrine, but he would now see them being built, right? He sees the War Prism, everything's basically added up. But yeah, as, you know, as he saw the, uh, the build unfold, he did start building up um, these Roach Warren, but I'm more worried about his detection, man. Like... Mm -hmm. He's got one squirt crawler in the main, and I don't know if traps are really going to go there. Oh. Yeah, the traps actually still only got two warp gates here. He's got a third one about to finish, so this is pretty quick BT action here from trap okay. coming across the map. Uh, Reyna yeah. does have a lot of lings. Six roaches are on the way. I mean, that's a definitely enough lings to fight back, but yeah, you're right. Like the detection being uh, uh, being not present for Reyna is the problem at the moment. Squirt crawler in the third will finish because trap. I mean, Trap might have missed an opportunity, right? If he had worked in four DTs, uh, or three, actually, he's only three gateways, and then immediately went to the natural with a third, that could have been a dead third or, or maybe a lot of drones killed as well. But he actually just went for two and then split them up. So the Spore Crawlers, while they were a little late, that was a little scary. It does look like Rainer was thinking more about the Adepts because he also built that Spine Crawler we always see with the defense. Yeah. He is defending fine against the DTs, and now it's usually more about the Archon drop. But Trap actually pulls all the way back home, so it's not really about uh, consistent pressure. Yeah, interesting follow-up here from the DT opening from Trap. I mean, it's not a, it's not a huge shocker to see him going to Blink and Forge and all this stuff, but just the fact that he's not putting Archons across the map, that is, that's something that I've not seen before, just to open with DTs and not come across with the Archons. Looks like he is now, but uh, you know, a little bit later than you would have expected as the Zerg player, still utilizing DTs in their cloak form to just find drone damage. You know, no, he's got detection, but not really any units. Good drones surrounding the DT. He's going to take a few drones with it, but it will die. Not going to find any success with his lings. I mean, it, it does, it kind of hurts for Rainer because I think he did maybe make a, a lot more army than he would if he 100% knew that it was Archon. So, you know, you get your queen's top of the warp prism and then you get a handful of roaches. Maybe not necessarily all the lings that he did, but uh, he's jumping back up in the drones because, yeah, up until literally right now, Trap has actually had the probe lead. He's been winning out in that economy game. So I think it's also why he felt kind of comfortable not necessarily pressuring all that much. He was like, oh, you have a lot of stuff anyways. Like, I'm just going to back off. He, he didn't even use the adepts he had warped in offensively. Yeah, he's got a little force here that uh, might join up with the Prism in a little bit with that Archon. As the Immortal comes down, that is actually a deceptively powerful army here for the Protoss at this point in the game. We saw him do a similar push on Everdream with just a few Archons, handful of sentries and an Immortal, and you look at that and you're like, ah, oh, that doesn't look too scary. But then when all the gateways finish up and a bunch of Blink Stalkers with plus one attack walk in, then it is actually quite a scary army. And Reyna does see it with the Overseer here. He knows that he is about to be pressured by the Protoss. Mm -hmm. Not too common you see the uh, the sentries out and about just for a walk, right? Like, it's usually a yeah, precursor to what's Yeah, scouting unit. <laughs> so, uh, he knows. It's also one of the, one of the, you know, common timings. That plus one, either charge or blink in this case. It is going to be blink. Did Raynor uh, stop building drones at the appropriate time? Because he was kind of, you know, catching up a little bit. I think maybe he's going to be okay. Worst case scenario, cancels the fourth base, which would still be a nice grab for Trap. But I don't think this is like a do or die situation. His Ling's trying to find some success, not really finding much. Oh, they might get a gateway or something here, but no, Rainer's just pulling those Ling's back. You know, he loves his run-bys. He's, he's made a career off them almost, it feels. But uh, Trap is locking things down tighter than a snare drum back at home. And, uh, whoop, Ling's coming in from the backside. Looks like Rainer trying to get us around, but Force Field's denying him the right side surround. Trap gonna punch through the left side and return back to high ground safety. Uh, Rainer is advancing here with the Roaches and Ravages off creep. Trap trying wow. to start a step. Oh, looks like he wants to pick the fight. That was a really cool Ling usage. He was hoping that Trap is going to go back the middle way and that his Lings would buy him time to cross a bile and jump on top, I think, is, is what he was planning on doing. And it kind of worked out. I mean, with the Lings awkwardly denying Trap the fastest you know, race back home, there were a couple of lost units, a little bit of AI to the right side as well up the, the other ramp. 
I mean, that, that was kind of cool. <laughs> I didn't, you know, net him a whole lot, but that was, that was pretty cool. And uh, Trap is going to be going into Blink Colossus, which Rainer should be anticipating. Oh! It's always sick when it works out, but it almost never works out. <laughs> almost never, almost never. Blink's coming down for a cancel on the fourth. Wow, Rainer just seems to have a clock in his brain on when bases are taken in the game. Because he's always there for that fourth base. And he gets that cancel. Feels like 67% of the time every time he gets it. Oh, speaking of cancels, that's a kill actually. Even better. Nice catch there from Trap. Now, in, in most cases, we'll be talking about how delaying the fourth base is really good and how getting a kill on a fifth base is really good. But I'm like, well, does Raider still get maxed out with Roach Chilling Bane Link? Uh, of course he does. That's, that's what I'm looking at. That's where I think it's more about, you know, who wins when, when that comes about. Like, when those fights happen, that's who's going to determine who wins. Now, Zombie Grub, you're right. Like, if that, if that fifth gets canceled another 15, 16 more times, it's going to start to matter. <laughs> yeah, it's only going to start to matter. Um, uh, well, nah. In all seriousness, though, uh, Trap is gearing up for a pretty scary army. Both players around where they want to be with their economies. And Trap's starting to get a few more splash damage units out for that very light army of Rainer. He's going to have a lot of Lings, Banelings, Ravagers, and that's all well and good. But Bar Ravager Ling Bane does show a bit of weakness against a sentry heavy Colossus based army for Protoss. Parting kind of showed us the way in GSL with some big PBZ wins in Code S. And Trap's been following suit, and it's been working wonders for him. Mm -hmm. So that's the third kill slash cancel out of the 16 he needs. Awesome stuff yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. 13 more to go. Yep. Well done. Well done. Uh, Trap actually could be attacking pretty much very soon. He's got plus two charge. The, the Colossus just popped out. Um, he's doing a really great job of harassing Rainer and making sure that Rainer's at least responding to things and not, mm. you know, default building 50 bailings and preparing for an attack. I actually wouldn't mind if Trap at least moved out to clear up this creep, which is kind of getting a little bit silly. It's like right in front of us. Get Tis getting a bit nuts here. Uh, Stalkers all by themselves, but they do have Blink and uh, they can kind of roam here a little bit and try and uh, pick off reinforcements or run bys here. These Lings actually are going to catch those Zealots caught on the outside of their gateway wall in, but it's very minimal damage here from Reyna. What he really wants is a probe line. Hive on the way now for Reyna. Now, normally at this point, there would be a Hydrogen and you'd be thinking, uh-oh, in comes the Lurkers. But there is actually no Hydrogen here from Reyna and the Lur that means the Lurker Den is very, very far away. So those really scary anti-ground units for Reyna aren't going to be here for a while, even with Hive about to come down. Oh, natural no, wide open trap! Oh, that no. looks amazing, but the lack of links back at home means also a lack of Bane links, and this army I think is going to be pretty good against what Raynor actually has. The Corrosive Biles hitting though, very effective Corrosive Biles. I think that was a mistake, a bit of a hurry there for Trap as he is being distracted. Oh, the blink oh. off the Bane links. The Immortals take a shot instead. He traps a couple of Ravagers. Trap now desperate to make this work since he's lost 35 probes, but I mean, maybe he can. Rainer's going to be reinforcing with some very mediocre units against three Immortals, two Archons, and three Colossus, and a War Prism that can still reinforce. I think you're absolutely right, ZG. The 35 probes going down is bad for Trap, but I think his army is just going to be powerful enough to seal this deal. Rainer is reinforcing with Roaches. 13 Roaches is a lot, but the Immortals are still here. The Archons, like you mentioned, are still here, and the Stalkers are being warped in from that prison as well. In come the Bailings from Rainer. This is going to be his last few Bailings in this game. Trap with too many units left over. In come the drones, and that's never a good sign. Trap no. just continuing to barrel through what remains of the defense of Rainer. And it looks like Trap is going to get some back-to-back -back victories here in this game against this Italian Stallion. He's finally finding these timings he really needs to hit and hard too. I mean, Rainer, if he had all of those lings back at home, that's a, what, extra 40 Bane lings probably? That's the, you know, guesstimate there. Because he would have made all those Bane lings. He would have if he, if he actually knew the attack was on the way. But instead, going for the run by, if he had hit when the army was like in the middle of the map, or when the army was preparing to move out, then Trap probably pulls back, it buys time, does some damage, and that's fantastic. But Trap was already committed, and Rainer did not have time to actually build anything else after he made that run by. Um, I'm gonna say like a bit of luck, because you know, luck's always involved in making the highest amount of StarCraft too. but also just finally Trap makes it work, you know, like, I just, I, I was waiting for Trap to finally win one of these games, like, because I'm, you know, Trap biased, but because I felt like he deserved it, man. Like, he, <laughs> he's playing excellent PvZ. Rainer just keeps on, like, bouncing back with amazing ZV. I mean, this is awesome. I'm I'm progressively becoming more and more excited for the series. You have to keep in mind that it's 4 a.m. here where I am in, in Australia, so I'm already, like, a little bit on the sleepy side, but I got to say, this series is waking me the hell up. Like, we are two and two. It's suddenly becoming way less of a sure thing here. Still favoring Rainer, of course, in this series, but Trap's showing us, even on the Zerg's preferred map, on Rainer's map pick, 
that he, if he can get to that army, is going to be extremely scary. We're going to take a short break. When we return, guys, game five of the grand final. Don't go away. G'day, mates! Welcome back to the grand finale here of DreamHack Masters Fall. I am Maynard with me as Zombie Grub, and we are about to jump into game five. We are tied up two apiece. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Zombie Grub, thoughts in the series as we swing on over into Deathra. I was afraid that it was going to be like the first two games, but then progressively worse. I said it basically when that hatchery went down on submarine. I was like, oh no, it's going to get worse, right? It's actually gotten better. I'm so happy for mm -hmm. it. We could actually have a absolutely sick 4-3 finals in either one of these guys' favor. This trap is finally finding some success. His macro good, his, his build orders are different, and uh, his micro has also been pretty good too. The blink past the banelings. Baby <laughs> <That was baller>. immortal, <laughs> take all the shots. I mean, that was, uh, yeah, exactly. Baller is absolutely the correct word. And this baller is right here on Death Aura in the top left for generic green wings, he's trap. And he's a fellow that used to have some PVZ issues in the past, but now he's toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best Zerg in the world for a lot of people. He is from Clash, Raider. Love it. Love it. But, uh... Love it. 
you know, now that Rainer has proved that he is mortal, he can bleed, um, we do have to highlight, you know, what went wrong in that game for him. Kind of making jokes like, well, he's going to get max with Banelings anyways. Problem was, he wasn't max with Banelings, he was more max with uh, Ravagers, right? Um, mm -hmm. Jokes aside, he did lose his fourth base, right? Like, that, that was the... I think one of the biggest intentions of a move out like that is to guarantee the fourth base is delayed for some time. And Trap got that. That was awesome. After getting a pretty good economy back at home, of course. And then he also delayed the fifth base, you know, three, four times. Um, that that was all stuff that was supposed to give him this nice little burst with that big old move out. He had a well, good timing. He had hampered Rainer a little bit. And he once again had those armies that in proper positioning does beat Ravager Ling Bane. So mm -hmm. the only chance that if Rainer had 30 Banelings coming from the backside, you know, that obviously would have been things very, very different. We went for the run by instead. Um, just an excellent play there from Trap. And Rainer has got to tighten up, you know? He, he did kind of misread that a little bit as the adept attack into the DTs. He did lose control of his fourth and his fifth. Now he's got to worry about that type of stuff. I doubt his, uh, Rainer is such a confident guy and he's no doubt still got that confident mask on and I'm sure he feels it inside. So it's not really a mask. It's more like just, you know, his actual face. He's just got a confident face. <laughs> he 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 knows that he is favored in the series. He'd be favoring himself here, but you're absolutely right. Doesn't he pull up his socks, make sure that he is uh, not leaving anything to chance here against Trap. I think going for things like Overlord Speed like he's doing right now is a really solid idea. He does not want to get caught with his pants down anymore in this series. Mm, I am uh, in 100% agreement right there. I mean... Obviously, he's a lot of respect for Trap. Um, he was drone scouting a lot versus TY, even if TY wasn't quite that, that type of player. Uh, he was very cautious in his games, even when he was still the favorite. And so I'll say that, yeah, I mean, I guess maybe hindsight's 2020, but I did favor him against TY. And now that he's been reminded that, you know, maybe just that surface level scouting isn't always going to work, I really need to get everything scouted correctly, he goes to the overwards speed. I actually think it's fantastic. I think that if he does make it to the mid game, uh, with the, the maxed out army, he is going to be in the better position. So make sure he gets there. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to the Adept build, which we obviously see on the way here now, that Overlord's speed, yeah, it's great to know about it. We talk about this a lot. The Adept build isn't necessarily about the element of surprise. It is a lot about what it can do just as is with the units, with the control, with the multitasking you have. Arena does get a pretty decent scout off there with that speed Overlord. Uh, both speed overlords actually he sees the Twilight Council, sees that there's also Chrono Boost being dumped into the robotics facility, and also, most importantly, does not see a Dark Shrine. So he knows it's the Adept Printer. Rainer is going to cut probes, uh, cut drones rather here, and drop that Roach Warren. And we're going to be seeing overlords, and well, actually, amazingly, going for another couple drones here. But as I say that, Rainer does need to start working on a lot of units right now. Forty seems to be the agreed upon drone amount. Magic number. Revealing. Yeah, exactly. I feel like at one point it was maybe like 442, but now it's like 40 is the, the sweet spot. So yeah, obviously Trap would have loved for this to have been a surprise because he'd done so many different things as openers to try and trick Rainer. He would have loved that this was like, aha, gotcha with Adepts. But now that it isn't, he does have to think about what he can do with the Adepts to still gain, maybe not a lead at this point, but still be okay in this game. Trap does have a funny follow-up or two to this, but I'll, I'll get into it when we actually get there since right now it's all about what can the Adepts do. And we did have one sort of shaving behind the pack there. It looked like she, she got the wrong directions from the commander. But the Adepts are now going to be a real pain here for Reyna. Until his Roach count gets a little bit higher and his army gets big enough to be able to split off confidently against an Adept Shade, Reyna does need to be very careful and respect every Shade here from Trap. Third base is under assault here. The Adepts when they're high enough in count can also engage Queens directly as we're seeing right here. Cancels the Shade. Looks like one Adept's going to get picked off there at the edge of the pack. Reyna still yet to lose any of these defensive units. He's finally out changed fuses. That one was closest to it. So one queen, two queen, no shade. That's definitely the correct call. Now he's actually got the shade mm -hmm. out as the army is out of the on top of him. Queen number three went down, I believe. War person got a little bit low when the recall has to be used. That gives Rainer a lot of breathing room when the Protoss actually um, like, entirely evacuates. Yeah, you, you know that the prism, if it's going to come back, it's going to be a while. So you have space, and if it's going to come back, it's not going to be with that many adepts. Like four max is basically what you're worried about here as Reyna. And he's actually super confident. He's going to send lings across the map. He wants to stop that third from happening. Oh, no. The natural. The natural. There's a force foot available, but now that moves <laughs> over to the third base. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was just a... Uh... I mean, Trap is not in a great position, right? Like, he wanted that to be more of a surprise, and uh, when it wasn't, he didn't actually get to do anything. He didn't 
really scare Rainer that long, which is one of those effects of the depths we talk about. It's like, well, yeah, maybe it wasn't a surprise, but, you know, the, the Zerg are going to take it so seriously. And uh, also he messed up and got six drones killed regardless of being prepared for it. None of that happened. Rainer actually dealt with that about as quick as he reasonably can without taking any economic damage. And yeah, now is all this free time to get the drones and then worry about the army is trapped is going for a follow-up. But uh, if Rainer can just start building roaches now instead of those drones, I think he'd be okay. Might be a little bit late to it. I I am actually worried for Rainer here a little bit, CG. No ravages yet for the Zerg. And without ravages, one does not break force fields. Uh, good catch here on the prism, though, at least. Might catch a few units. No, he actually pulls back as the adepts come in. Oh, my God. This army of trap is actually so deadly. It really is. Rainer went up to 65 drones. If he needs up at 58 or Ooh. 55, that would have been a lot better. The force fields are pretty damn brutal, and Rainer just did not. He thought this was the third base. He fell entirely into the trap. Ah. Get out of here. You're fired. <laughs> Uh, Rainer is catching a reinforcement here, but it does not really matter. Trap has got way too much in his face and in his base, killing the third base. And now the Adept Shades just, I mean, the Adept Count, you can just cancel the Shade. He is more than enough units to fight back. That Shade I actually feel like was a big mistake. That well, the Adepts need to protect this army. That, that was a, that they needed to be on top of this army protecting them from the lanes. That was an oops-a-daisy right there. All the sentries yeah. get taken away. The Immortals are still alive, but getting weak. Every time they dropped out of that warp prism, a little more time for Rainer to collect some lings. His roach is still alive, might be able to handle the adepts, but I guess the immortal is still there threatening, even if they're themselves weak. The printer lives again. This trap's gonna print himself a map here, I feel, in a second. Like a lot of roaches and ravages is fantastic. Trap can shade so many adepts, though, and he is feeling super confident here, diving in with the immortals. A little bit of sloppiness from Trap earlier, but he is still finding the nuts, I feel, here. He's got himself two hatchery kills. He is on equal bases with the Zerg. The prison's still alive. Queen's not really threatening it. And with more adepts coming on in, Rainer finding himself without anything defensively anymore. And Trap is actually going to be on match point, Zombie Grub. GG. No one really anticipated this. Rainer himself included. And it is feeling a little bit like last season semifinals. Rainer uh -oh. was hella confident and still ended up losing out. It's uh, it's a concern because that Ooh. probably was not the last tricky thing that Trap can do, right? I was actually going to talk about his follow-up disruptor plan he can do after the Adepts, but obviously uh, a very powerful and more common one is exactly what he did, which is the follow-up the Immortal Adepts push. And that really just, Rainer really did think that their base was was real, you know? Another 30 seconds, another minute for him to prepare for something. And he did not have that time. The list of Protosses that can win three maps in a row against Rainer of all people is extremely short. In fact, I think it might be a list of zero people that may soon have a one single name on it. It may just be Trap. Uh, Trap is on match point here, guys. He's won three maps in a row, another map win, and he is the champion of Dreamhack Fall. Trap has been so close. He's been in so many finals. He's been so close to winning those big championships, but never quite got there. And Benning stopped short, of course, by Serral, sort of the 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 anti rainer on the other side of, of of the summer bracket. And oh my God, if Trap can get this done one more time against Rainer, if he can win against Rainer one more time, he is going to be the first Protoss champion in a long time for Premier tournaments, and that is extremely exciting. Yeah, that is a very very good point. He'd be winning one for the entire Protoss race. Those for the race. That's right. Uh, also winning one for Korea after they let it go to Serral last season. Um, man, this guy's looking pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of nerding out about Trap's PVZ. I really was not that impressed in his game versus Solar, which I said is like more the, one of the recent PVZs, high profile PVZs. But I guess those also kind of were like awkward games. There was a Link Flood and Everdream, because of course there was. And then there was a, a <laughs> odd Golden Wall game. But uh, yeah, anyways, for him to be successfully you know, tricking and, and hitting these strong timings against a guy like Rainer, it is impressive. I mean, I feel like if Rainer had 10 more seconds of, of acknowledgement that that push was, was actually coming his way, like pulls the drones from the third, he instead holds up in his fourth base, he has time to build those Ravagers, and suddenly we're like, well, he should have died, but he's Rainer. And now, yeah, Trap's actually hitting these strong timings, making them work, even with some awkward shades. Oh, Trap is just restarting his PC here, so we have a minute. And I, you know, I actually want to bring up the fact that uh... You know, we were talking about the calm sort of uh, demeanor that, that Rainer manages to keep at this level of StarCraft. And 
you know, in the grand finals, of course, he's usually still, even at this level, being able to keep a pretty cool demeanor. But I got to say, he looked pretty tilted after that last game there. He was pretty upset with himself for the misread. Trap's been a little bit of a tricky tricycle in this series. At least a couple of the games has been very tricky, very sneaky. And he's caught uh, he's caught Reyna unawares with his hand in the cookie jar, as it were. And I think Reyna really hates losing those kind of things, just being bamboozled, especially when he does things like opens Overlord speed. He's being super yeah. careful. He's like, oh, I, I know what this is. I know what this is. And then just that one little mistake. And then Trap just all of a sudden steals the map from you. And, it, it, you know, a couple of those maps have happened already in this series, and it seems to be breaking Rainer a little bit. And I hope that's not the case. I hope that during this break, while we're getting Trap sort of, you know, resituated and fixing his PC issues, Rainer can reset that mind and and, uh, and and get back in there with a fresh mindset because it is uh, so important to remain cool on, uh, you know, match match point here for your opponent. Mm -hmm. At this point, we don't question the, the champion's mentality too often. I mean, even when Cyril was like muttering to himself and really looking quite upset, it was like, well, you know, he's, he's proved himself over the last two years. I'm not so worried by Rainer's like, you know, heavy tilt factor, but I do think he's a little bit frustrated with himself. Um, yeah, especially as you said, because he got the Overlord speed. He, he was like, okay, I've got this under control. But I guess the, the thing about Adepts is not only do they sometimes find damage or that they find indirect damage by the Zergs over preparing against them, they also are just the thing you're more focused on, right? You're like, whoa, okay, I'm done with the Adept phase. Fantastic, I'm doing great. And perhaps thinking about all of the branches off that Adept tree is, is kind of like the thing you think of a little bit too late. He's like, yeah, I'm doing great. Oh no, also that existed. Oh, crap. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, that thing. They do follow up that sometimes, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a little bit like that. I'm sure he was thinking of a lot of things and Trap did an excellent job of posturing for a third. That was never going to actually exist, but uh, I want to say that Rainer also like legitimately just sent all of his links back home. I didn't actually check to see, but I'm not even sure Rainer had a link seeing the move out. His Death Door is a pretty long map when you have to go through the middle, even with the acceleration zones. And uh, he was building four drones up to the, like the army at his third. So he just he really missed out on the follow up scouting. Yeah, it was the phase two of the scout that was definitely the, the problem. And unfortunately, that was the huge power spike for the Protoss as they move out with sentries and immortals. And if, if the first wind you're getting of that attack is is in the middle of the map, that's a little bit too little too late. You know, you're absolutely right. You gotta you gotta be keeping in tabs on that third base and is you know, is there's a use case there. It's like a state machine. Like is it there? Y slash N? And if no, then very likely something sinister is is afoot. The game is afoot, and I need to start reacting accordingly. Uh, and of course, you know, every mistake at this level of StarCraft is going to very often deal in at least, if not critical damage, a straight up loss, as we saw there for Rainer in game four. It's like Trap is back in the lobby, and we're going to get that countdown shortly. It's going to be Pillars of Gold coming up next. And we have been switching, you know, we've been doing the thing where we're going from central to west, central to west, central to west. So players have been having and losing ping advantage. And it feels like a lot of this game hasn't really been like a lack of control or a micro mistake from either player. It's been more like, one player out strategizing the other, just really playing the strategy game here and uh, getting in their opponent's head. And, uh, you know, sometimes Reyna does it, sometimes Trap does it. And that's really cool. That's awesome. So this is basically like the, the purest form of competition that you kind of want to see. Yeah, I, I do think that it, it hasn't been that in like, at least not a very obvious factor, right? Like as, as far as I've seen, we've actually been complimenting a lot of their micro, right? For Zerg, it's always like a little bit more about the pre-positioning, so they do get like a bit more of a pass when it comes to that ping. I know it's a controversial statement, but that's the way Whoa. they set up engagements is before the engagement most of the time, right? Where Protosses have to instantaneously interact during the engagement. Which one is that, that ping thing going to favor? So, um, mm. but anyways, like I've never really witnessed either side being like, oh, well, that's, you know, he didn't move that war prism because clearly he was, that was just a you know, ping mistake. No, it's actually right. been very high level, even across servers. But it is worth noting that Rainer is now on West. So theoretically, he's on the one that doesn't prefer him. Yes, so he will have the ping at disadvantage in this game. And we'll, uh, I mean, we've just been talking about how it's not really played a part in the series, and it might here in this game as we're heading in to map six. In the top spawn here, currently on match points from Jinnah Green Wings, the Korean Protoss, he is trapped. In the bottom left, as the blue Zerg, he is Kalash's Rainer. Just realized that I'm probably uh, waking up the wife who starts a brand new job in three hours. Ooh, very early probe here, trying to go for the hatchery block. Uh, yeah, it's 
going to get it. Kind of yep. annoying. Just in time. That is annoying. So Rainer wanted to take that hatch room 15 purposely to try and avoid that. Right, yeah, yeah. 16 with the 15 already. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't really go for much earlier than that because while you... I've seen Zergs do it, you know, if they're up against someone who always does the earliest pro block, they just are so tilted. They're just like, F it, I'm going to go for a 14 hatch or something. Like, yeah, it's not supposed to be that good. So... It's, uh, it's, it is problematic because, you know, Rainer wanted to take that natural. He did not anticipate being blocked. And while that might not be the biggest issue, I do have to bring up again that sometimes it's going to be scary because of the Adepts. Which, I don't know if Traps can do. I feel like Traps can do a Twilight Council opener and then do XYZ B feed thing otherwise, right? Like, that's mm -hmm. he's been doing things that look kind of similar but actually have really important differences. So what was that last letter you mentioned? You said X, a Y, B, V, and then a fee. Okay, a so the letter fee. Exactly. You said V, and then you said fee. So fee is the letter that... Uh, so if plan fee comes out here for travel, we'll be interested, interested to see what that is. Exactly. There are enough alphabet uh, letters in the alphabet, so I added another one. You're welcome. You know what, Somebody grab you're right. There are not enough alphabet letters in the alphabet. You know I'm what? Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm getting you know I'm what? getting sassy because it's quarter past four. All right. I'm yeah, sassy. someone's a little grumpy. Okay. I'm getting, I'm getting sassy. Nap -nap. I'm a bit of a grump right now. All right. I, I need I need to get tucked in. I need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little Jeez. grumpy. He's a little bit. Who's a tired boy? He needs to go to bed. All right. So <laughs> uh, we do have a little bit of a scout there from Trap. Knows the lings are out here. Speed just starts for Rainer. He's actually not going for Overlord speed this game. At least not yet. So, uh, feeling a little bit more confident as to what Trap is up to in this game, at least, so far. It is that Stargate again. Yeah, yeah, I think that was Warp Gate and Stargate. Um, the Overlord would have free access to the main if it just skirted over there. But again, a lot of these Zergs are going to put one Overlord over the pillar that can't be attacked until there is an air unit. And then no other Overlord around that base. Especially if a Phoenix pops out, right? And we lose two Overlords when realistically out of like all the top cvps one overlord like does the trick enough anyways um and then like ling surrounds and uh sorry scouts otherwise the overlord is gonna dive in see if it can catch uh sometimes like i think stats would put his pylon on the edge of his main and then put a structure down near his natural which is kind of cool would have caught that it i don't think it catches the stargate like a stalker is about to pop out I think you're right. I uh, actually, it it's pretty deep in the main. Okay, yeah, so okay, it'll it just catch it if it goes to the bottom right here. But if it just beelines straight east, it's not actually going to see the Stargate. Well, the Oracle is already out, so the reaction, if it was entirely based off the Overlord, would already be a little bit too late. I think Rainer did just build a score crawler, and he has two queens at his third. So, yeah, the safe yeah. almost. Uh, it, it's a safe way, and you're not even that committed to it. So. Done by Rainer. Yeah. Uh, Trap's still finding a drone or two here. Oh, gets that third and just darts through the middle of that creep spread as there is no queen really to punish him for it. A little bit of a link counterattack deflected by Trap, who is, you know, dotting his eyes and crossing his T's and looking pretty solid here, dropping that robo. So is transitioning out of Oracles into, you know, your Twilight Council upgrades, your robo facilities, a very ho hum regular PVZ opening here from Trap. Yeah, you know, and it, that actually is worth discussing because there was that. Well, the first game where he did not grab a Twilight Council on a Forge. And I'm actually paying close attention to the lack of Forge here. Um, could he add on DTs? He has done this build before. I thought the Robo came down with DTs, though, so I'm actually not sure it's... it's uh, Sorry, with the Dark Shrine. So I'm not sure oh. that. Fast charge? Hmm. Yeah. I'm waiting. Actually, <laughs> I'm waiting for a mate here on this Twilight Council. Prism's out, as you would expect here from that Robo facility. It kind of feels like charge, huh? Yeah, charge and archon. Ooh. Oh. All right. All right. You don't see this is a bit old school here from Trap. Yes. By the way, indeed. Oracle gets picked off, and uh, this adept does go down. Does get seven drones though, which is pretty consequential. So he's actually not getting charged. It is actually just right into an archon drop. Wow. Um, you know, it's it's definitely not it's not super threatening like a just right into archon drop. And I still thought the build was a little bit different, but it's it's most uh, distinguishing feature right now is that it is a Templar Archives. You know, we say Archon drop, and it pretty much went from being DTs, and then at one point it was actually a lot of Templar Archives, and then it went back to DTs like a year and a half ago or something. So, yeah. 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 Finding, and he actually sees with the High Templar too, which is kind of a nice find. 
That is really nice there for Reno. So he's probably expecting charge here. Like we were expecting as well. And it does come up, but a little bit later there for Trap. As this used to be the way to do this. You know, when the Templar Archives was in the meta, as ZG mentioned, being the Archon drop, uh, the backbone of the Archon drop, the charge was there, Forge and plus one usually as well. But we do have the Archons coming in the prism. Reyna obviously is making Roaches. Lair's about to finish soon. Go towards Roach speed. A well-placed Spore as well. Going to stop that prism from diving super far in. And the Queens are here to meet those Archons. Interesting that he's building a Spine Crawl at the third. Uh, yeah, I'm actually... Is he anticipating... He might be anticipating the charge on attack with the Archons. That can be, you know, very obnoxious to deal with. Even if you only have four gateways, if you were, you know, building up that Zealot count, it could still be threatening. But, um... It's still odd for me to see a spine crawl at the third in reaction to that, you know, potential. Is uh, well, we don't usually see it. Regardless, it's there. It might help out for future run buys. He has uh, appropriately dealt with the archons, and now he needs to worry a lot more about that follow up. That's what's been tripping him up. So his lings, they get a bit of a scout. They see a probe transfer, I think. So you know that third is pretty real, but the gas is not being taken means that there is definitely a chance for. An attack. I mean, a pretty strong chance as we see five gateways finishing up. Yeah, Traps about to have uh, nine gates here. That's quite a bit of production. Quite a bit of production indeed, considering there's also a robotics facility making up that 10th production facility, making immortals. So Reyna is holding the unit production keys, He's making a lot of roaches and a lot of lings, and that is definitely the right call. As Trap is going to move through the middle of the map here. Reyna sees some units move out. Prism in the main base going for some more harassment, getting a roach or two here. Every little bit counts for Trap. He's got to be careful not to be entire. Like, that's a lot of roads to deal with the Archon. The Queens, though, trying to find the War Prism. Oh! It actually goes over the uh, high ground, but it is still going to go down. Still a very nice pickoff. And now the attack doesn't work. I think it's just too dangerous to do it. Yeah, I absolutely completely agree with you. And I think Trap does as well. He's moving all the way back home. He might reinforce with the charge lots and then try it again, bringing the Archons along with him. But they're actually chilling at home here. Okay, in they go. All right. So everything's going to get grouped up, and Trap will try again. Without a Prism, though. Very, very scary if he does go for it. Uh, maybe also a little bit of like keeping the high ground against a potential uh, counter attack. You know, Rainer goes, oh, I can you know take the map freely now. Sometimes you want to get that little bit of a high ground on that ramp he was just at, but he actually does pull back to his oh. third. Oh, he definitely has to pull it back as Ling slip on by into the natural, into the main base. And this is now, it's the opposite scenario of, of the, the, the Archons. Like now Rainer is distracting Trap from being in position for his Roaches and Ravagers. I can't believe you've done this. It always amazes me when there's not a plugged hole against Rainer or against Zerg in general. We do have an Archon getting picked off there. Nice pick off for Rainer. Of course, these roaches are getting scooped a little bit, but it's only a few roaches and he did kill an Archon. On the left side, he's going to lose another one here. Trap going to pull that thing back and save it. That is 300 gas right there. Mm. That was uh, not that big of an army. I think that was Rainer just looking for an opportunistic attack. Maybe a couple of mortals that weren't properly defended. Maybe the sentries that for some reason weren't hotkeyed. Something along those lines. That wasn't a tr super deadly. You know, add on 30 links, then it's really deadly. But um, Rainer has got the 74 workers, four bases, is now adding on a Banley Nest and plus one melee. So that's really not that fast of a transfer over into those uh, suicidal Banelings, the scary boys. But he will mm -hmm. eventually get there. Trap, though, once again, favoring the Disruptor play. Yeah, he's getting the Disruptor's pretty quick. Yeah, that's a nice scoop. Those are five dead roaches for free. There's a lot uh -oh. more where that came from on the left side, but the Disruptors are here at the third base. Rainer off creep here. Pull back. Uh, loses a couple Ravages. Not that bad, but of course, the disruptors are just on cooldown here. And I think Reyna's going to think twice about attacking at this point. Like, how do you break this with that army? It's a little too scary. Not because of the disruptors, because of the force fields, right? Like, the disruptors are clearly out of juice. And if there weren't force fields available, maybe he pounces on that. It's a big maybe because it's still a lot of immortals. But um, with the force fields guarding against the ground, he is fine. Trapped. Uh, really delayed that forge, right? He wanted to do the attack that didn't end up actually happening, and then he wanted to get into disruptors as fast as possible. So his upgrades are, you know, abysmal here. He does not have any. But he's hoping that just, like, pure might <laughs> might actually be able to push past. So that and some good force builds. Uh, four pylons finishing up here for Trap. He's a fly block there for a hot minute. He is knocking on that hatchery. That's a kill right there. Trap still. Three disruptors and a lot of immortals and a fair bit of energy on these sentries as well. This is a deadly attack for Trap. Even without those upgrades you mentioned, CG, just a lot of Protoss units here is still potentially a problem for Reyna. Oh, that Nova going into the pack, getting three Ravages. This one going in the middle as well. Getting a handful of Lings, not really a juicy connection. The Banelings still rolling on through, killing two disruptors, but without Banelings speed. They don't get an amazing connection. Disruptor trying to save itself, but not quite. This Roach counterattack of Rainer slipping by here. I didn't see it. Trap didn't see it. It's finding damage. Stalker Warp in might just be good enough. 
You know, I actually wonder if the Swifter had hit the Baneling. That would have been a bit better than the drones. But uh, as it is, there's still a good army for Raynor. He is going to have to evacuate that fourth base. And the lacking Baneling speed was definitely uh, a problem Ooh, in that last fight. He was denied. plus two as well. He can still take a really good fight if he gets a decent surround, but Trap is hungry. He's looking for blood. He's looking for the game-winning push. Uh, Nova's coming forward again. Rainer trying to split as well as he can. So far, not bad. He lost a couple banelings there, a couple links. Not too bad. Oh, this Nova comes forward, but a good split from Rainer. Well done by Rainer. He's killed 17 probes on the other side of the map as well, so Trap does not have a whole lot of a plan B here, or a plan C. It's not really here for Trap. Charge lots and Stalkers reinforcing from the low ground. Rainer needs to be careful here, can't overextend. It is still on the precipice for both players, but I've got to say, Rainer is looking good in game six. I think he's got a little bit of that edge, right? He's still got two upgrades to work with him, although Trap is finally finishing up his ground weapons, and uh, he is going to be able to double expand, which I think is absolutely the right call. He lost bases, though, so that's 71 drones, not really accurate to the actual economy. Trap might have lost workers, but I'm guessing with the way the minerals have mined out, he's probably mining pretty efficiently as well. Like, it's definitely not over, but Rainer is, uh, he's going to do better with time. I am a little more worried for Trap if he can't do more damage. Yeah. Uh, Rainer is just going to uh, get close to max out here on Ravager, Ling, and Baneling. It feels like he even has breathing room to tech up, you know, drop that infestation pit and get ready for the next phase of the game. But does he need to? At the moment, it looks like Trap is very committed on a mid to, uh, you know, a few high tier units here, and mainly sort of a tier two army here for Rainer, uh, for, for Trap rather. So if Rainer just maxes out with an army of Ravager, Ling, Bane, I think he's got a really good shot, especially on Creep. He's taking a great oh. engagement. Oh my God, that Nova, Nova was insane. Yeah, the Ravagers, a couple of Banelings there too. Very good <laughs> purification, Nova. Uh, left side might have to be given up again. Actually, Rainer looks like he wants to try and defend. Oh. I mean, that's only two Disruptors. It's uh, third and fourth one actually from the back. Yeah, it looks like they were on the same hockey there and nearly nobody's own stuff, but a good, a, a good trajectory change there from Trap. Use everything alive. Yeah, Trap's army is scary again. He's managed to get himself into a very, very nice composition. Very Stalker heavy. Very anti Baneling. And with the Novus, yeah. potentially anti-Ravager as well. <laughs> that's definitely one of those armies that's scary when it hits, right? Like, yeah, Raynor could lose 20 Banelings in one go, because I don't think he's really going to be splitting a whole lot with those Banelings. But also, Trap has no way of evacuating. Once his Disruptors shoot, and he's only left with even one left, but, you know, maybe zero left, Raynor pounces on him, and that army doesn't hold up. I think he would need four fields to really feel confident which he did not have, and he's actually not bothering to add in too many of either. But maybe some more Archons mm. can kind of be, hopefully, what the Banelings run into, more than his Stalkers and more than his Disruptors. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a scary match for both, right? Like, it really does come down to the Disruptors. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Now, this this thing feels like a, just a toxic troll, actually. Like, when you see one Oracle arrive on top of Ravages, and you're like, come on, man. It starts picking off Ravages one after another, just watching its energy bar drain. Oh, Trap going straight up the guts here. Raining, Rainer moving down to meet him, and he's got a bailing flank from the backside as well. This is where Rainer oh. really shines with those setups, with those engagements. Do the bailing flank critical mass damage? Yes, they do. Tons of Stalkers go down there, and the Immortals separated from the pack as the Ravages pounce on in. Uh, one Immortal is going to be able to barely live. Three Disruptors as well, so Trap doesn't straight up lose right there. But that was a pretty good surround. A couple of Zealots looking to be a bother, but really not too much. So Rainer is now successfully on five bases. 72 drones, 76 actually with more on the way. And Trap has to rebuild that army. But there's not, you can't rebuild against those surrounds, right? Like every time you step out, even if it's off creep, it's mostly been off creep. You have to be worried about Rainer has actually positioned his Bane Links. Rainer getting close to plus two here where the Bane Links really have a nice spike in power. More and more disruptors coming down for Trap. It really seems like this is his answer to deal with that army of Rainer, and you may just be right. You know, there's nothing really to punish the disruptor count at the moment for Rainer, uh, apart from having like a ton of melee units, like a lot of Banelings and a lot of Lings. But uh, the disruptors, you have enough of those. The Ravagers feel like they can't actually do what they're meant to do, and that is like bile down and hit that army from the back line. Nice charge lot run by here. Is going to cancel a hatchery up to the north side. Put a fair bit of damage on this one as well. Rainer going to move into intercept, get rid of these charge lots and start morphing those banelings again, getting ready with plus two attack to hold Trap's next attack here. Definitely more important to watch the attack. There's also some banelings waiting for some juicy shots. It's actually extremely awkward right there. Uh, oh, Warperson oh. goes down, speaking of awkward. So Trap, once again, might have to rethink pushing in. Oh, these Charles Lots going to find some drones for sure. Baneling run by there, not finding anything from Rainer. These Zealots are definitely finding damage. The Lings move to the right side to intercept. A lot of Rainer's army actually goes to the right side to intercept. 
Trap is also trying to hit another hatchery over here at sort of like the, you know, the, the, the sixth or seventh o'clock position. That's forward, fourth base. And Rainer's army looked like he was going to get routed there by Trap's army through the middle of the map. But Trap pulls back, realizing, ooh, my charge lot run by is a meeting a lot of Zerg units. The Zerg's got plenty here. There's still creep. Let's pull back and get a few more splash damage units. He's going into Colossi now to punish mm -hmm. the heavy Ling Bane count here of Rainer. It's going to be more dependable for sure. Yeah, every time you, you think like, oh, maybe there's an opening, right? Like I'm attacking the left, I'm attacking the right. I'll just go through the middle with the attack. The problem is that you might be setting up for a perfect surround by them as their left and right defenses converge on your own middle attack. So Trap has got to be playing it pretty safe. Ooh. He knows the dangers of being surrounded. Oh, oh that's going to be a big hit. That's yeah, a lot of Bailey's going down. Uh, he's there. actually, yeah, some decent enough splits there. Did take a lot of damage from the first couple Novas, but the last few not too bad for him. And he also got to Bile down an Archon. So it was a bit of a trade for both players. Reyna with Ling Bane Ravager. Just straight Ling Bane Ravager. Go big or go home, says Reyna with his tier two army. It really feels like if, if Trap manages to get enough Colossi out, uh, Reyna's going to wish he had something else. You know, that, that, that teching into Lurker or, or going into Hive and going for something like, you know, Vipacy would be absolutely incredible. But it's easier said than done. It's hard to make that call at this point because Trap's been in his face pretty much all game. I do think maybe now is the time, right? Like, you can't really think of a bank as, as a bank until you're absolutely certain you're not going to be engaging. Because right now, Rainer, if he were to engage, would need that bank to remax on Banelings. But I think there is that risk that he can take now. I, I, I think he should anyways. Now, but you're right. It's an absolutely hard call to make. It's one of the things that uh, he would have gotten if there wasn't all of that kerfuffle around his fourth, right? If he had gone, mm. been on four bases, five bases, no problem. He's already up the hive. It's already a problem. Did that Colossus just get rallied into... Yes. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yep. Yeah, a little bit of a... All right. Well, uh, Trap will adjust his robo facility rallies there after losing one Colossus. There is still three Colossus in this army, so as hilarious as that mistake was, there is still a threatening attack here from Crap. <laughs> Trying to position his army off creep. Loses a disruptor there. Oh, going to catch a bunch of Banelings being morphed, but still Rainer with a... A fair bit of army left over. Trap with the army supply lead, though, which is always scary for me for Zerg. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's got to be where they're comfortable, though, because they're always going to have so many drones. I mean, 80 is actually some of the lower counts we've seen today. <laughs> You're going up to 90 or 100 sometimes. But uh, the Banelings can try and make up for it. Banelings actually running uh -oh. into an army that should be a decent trade for Trap. Just pulls back those Colossus yeah. a little bit. So that was a lot of Banelings to use there. Yeah, that was quite expensive for Rainer and didn't get a whole lot of purchase, like a few Stalkers, sure. Ravagers coming forward, big bile there, or rather a big Nova into the Banelings and into the Ravagers. These Novas have been pretty nice. Trap retreating back up to the high ground. Rainer bleeding out units here during this attack. Another big blink forward there. Meanwhile, tons of drones dying on the left side. That charge lot run by once again, hitting two hatcheries at once. Mm -hmm. This has been some nasty charge lot harassment here from Trap. Yeah, it's a, I think it's another result of not being a perfect game macro-wise. Like, Rainer had to reel from the loss of his bases and then getting it up to Hive and also didn't add on any static defense. Blinking wow. aggressively into Ravagers, only a handful of Banelings left over actually turns out okay. Trap is now a bit down in the army supply and he doesn't quite know where Rainer has those Lings, would be Banelings. So again, have to be extremely careful. I'm gonna choose yeah. more of a, I guess, of a choke to push through. I see the Lings now. It really feels like Reyna hasn't been able to play his game here. You know, at this point, Reyna would have had run-bys, would have killed a ton of probes, he would have broken a natural or, or gotten lings in somewhere. Right now, he's had to use everything defensively. Will it be enough to stop Trap this time? The Nova's come forward, actually kills his own Archon, another Archon dying there. Trap looks like he's overextending here on the right side. Reyna might have found that and found that good engagement that he wanted. Maybe. Lings on the backside actually were more of a complication than you would expect against Colossus. The disruptors were actually used to try and take care of them because at first Rain only showed four, so it was one. And then he showed 16, so it was then two. And then the rest of them came to actually kind of help contain and surround. It was a nice job. Maybe there would have been better as Banelings. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But the Lings did the trick. And Trap is now down in uh, workers only, only slightly. And down in that army supply. Rainer just remaxing on Ling, Baneling as much as possible. We have been talking about Larva in this game, and that is still a problem. You know, he's not actually, that's his problem right now. He has the bank, he, he would love to yeah, max he, out, but no Larva. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The bottom right base has been ignored for the most part. He's got no, uh, no injects there or anything like that. Not a ton of defenses, static defense or otherwise here. In comes the Novas from Trap, looking for drone damage, looking for Ling damage. Not too consequential, especially considering he lost that Disruptor. That did not go well for Trap. And Reyna finally looks like he's going to get onto the Protoss side of the map and try and get something done here. Has an army on the left side ready for that third Nexus. Trying to hit it two places at once, but uh, the left side being ignored for now for Reyna. That bottom... Oh, man, that right Nexus is in big troubles on the grub. 
Uh, good disruptor shot there. Even as Rainer is trying to split, probes go down. Uh, aggressive disruptor. Looks like he got a handful of banelings. Rainer is still looking pretty cool off to the right side. I don't know if we'll get to see it, but I just want to highlight that he has burrowed banelings. And I checked, and Trap has not had an observer with his army for some time. Those could mm -hmm. just be for zealot run buys, and that would be brilliant. But they could actually help tear down the health of a disruptor or the Colossus. Prism getting caught here by the Ravages. I mean, it's not dead, but it's sort of, uh, you know, it's a bit of a Mexican standoff there on the left side. That is a committed run by there from Trap. Oh my god, drops the Disruptor right on top of the Zerg units. A questionable play there from Trap. In comes the Charge Blast, but with Archon support, he can actually win this fight. And that Hatchery is in big trouble of going down, but in come the rest of Lynx on the right side. Obviously, Reina does not have Hive, he does not have Adrenal, but these Lynx are still just so numerous that they're able to crush through those Zealots and force back, but not at the, uh, not without a cost. He lost the Hatchery. Yeah, I mean, look at Trap Supply actually after that. That might have been an okay move if he was on seven bases, you know, this entire time. And then we're like, ah, you know, a dozen zealots. But no, like a dozen zealots is actually pretty expensive. Trap's yeah. poor army is still good. Like he is replacing mostly fodder units. Colossus is still intact, Disruptor is still intact, but he does still need a big army. Um, you know, an Archons, I think, especially to help soak any of the, the banelings that are sure to come. Yeah. Feels like Trap's engine is starting to run out of fuel here. He's just running on fumes at the moment. Really needs this Nexus to finish, and he oh. really, 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 really needs to not take it. Oh my god, they're bailing bombs! Oh, I don't think he's just, I, did he forget about oh, it? Oh, he's gonna get it! Oh my oh god! god. So many Bailing started those fire. Oh my god, the Novas were so huge there. Will it be enough from Trap? Blinks those stalkers forward. Has a bit of a concave, a real nice concave with the Archons actually, with Rainer caught in the middle, but Rainer's Remax. These units are gonna come down and just overwhelm this high-tech army of Trap. And uh, by the skin of his teeth, that looked really close there for a minute, but by the skin of his teeth, Rainer is actually gonna fight back. And it looks like he's on the precipice of taking this to a game seven zombie grub. Those stalkers not gonna be enough and the Colossi not gonna be able to handle this many Zerg units. Oh my gosh, that was almost a game changing disruptor shot. He was he realized his mistake and thought maybe I could catch the disruptors before the one shot. And he uh, was unable to catch all of them. That was fantastic, but Trap is uh, just about units. His economy never really got set up in a, in a really complete way and you know, just not enough good trades as Rainer was steadily, you know, not, not perfectly, but steadily on all the bases he had. I mean, it's still, it's gonna feel like a close game. Trap knows that Rainer's also in exactly in a, you know, 3,000, 3,000 bank here, but oh, that supply, I mean, 79 to 23 isn't what you would expect at 24 minutes, but it is in Rainer's favor. Yeah, it's going to be very, very hard to foresee, you know, Rainer losing this game. He's got complete control at the moment. Trap really needs, like I mentioned, that Nexus needed to survive. He needed to lock that thing down with static defense, with his army. Expanding right now for Trap, continuing to amass resources is a bit of a pipe dream. You know, he's almost got half the mining of Rainer. And, mine, and Rainer's not even mining any gas at the moment. He is just making whatever he can out of minerals. He does need, I, I feel like, need to start mining gas. He hasn't taken extractors at those bases on the far right. And this uh, Colossus has got a hell of a job ahead of it, Zombie Grub. This Colossus needs to win trap the game, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's, uh, that'd be the most impressive Colossus I've seen. Don't think yeah. it's going to happen. A couple of uh, big units going down, just a handful of Lings. I mean, again, Rainer's not exactly banking a ton, but <clears throat> Lings being effective is a bad sign for trap. He's got a little bit of a run by set up to the left side, so he's once again going to deny Rainer's fifth or sixth, but Rainer has that really nice pace to the middle right, and that's going to be it. Rainer brings it back, and we're going to a game seven. You know what, Zombie Grub? I got to say, and this isn't just biased because you and I are commentating it, this is actually one of the better finals we've had in StarCraft 2. I'm actually having a really great time here. This has been a very, very back and forth. Both players are extremely closely matched, and that is exciting. We all, all of us, and most of people watching right now that are fans of the game, are uh, feeling Rainer pretty heavily in this series, but Trap has been showing us multiple times in the series that he's an absolute threat. And we are getting ready for one map to decide all of it. Before we get into game seven, guys, we'll take a short break. When we return, the final map for DreamHack Masters Fall. We'll see.
G'day StarCraft fans, welcome back. It is the final map for this entire season of DreamHack. Game seven of the grand final. Reyna and Trap locking horns here. An incredibly close battle between these two players as we go to Golden Wall to seal this deal. And this is actually, you know, Golden Wall's about to be taken out of the map pool. So this is a, a big moment for this map that everyone's been vetoing the hell out of these last yeah. couple tournaments. Literally the last time you'll see it for this, for DreamHack. Uh, by yep. DreamHack Winter, it'll be out and it'll be into the season three map pool. So, oh, it's kind of like a, you know, we get like a champagne bottle. Yeah, like it's like a send off. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna Au be revoir, fun. Au revoir, Golden Wall. Let's uh, let's go out in style, shall we? And have a sick game seven. We've loaded in. Both players are amassing their probes and amassing their drones. Let's do it, guys. Game seven. Oh boy, I'm excited for this one. ZG in the bottom left from Junior Greenwings. We didn't think he could do it, but it turns out he can. Will he though? It is trap. In the bottom right as the blue Zerg for Team Clash, he is Rainer. Checkmate, Protoss. <laughs> Actually, that was a 15 hatch. Yeah. 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 He, was, he's, he doesn't want to wait for that extra drone. He was like, I know you're going to do this. Nice. Nicely done. Um, nice. <laughs> not to look into it too much, but you know, it's as soon as you're like, yeah, it's Golden Wall. I was like, oh, yeah. I remember like uh, an hour ago when we were like, yeah, I heavily <laughs> doubt Golden Wall is going to show up. But, you know, it could happen. Yeah. And I was so smug about it, too. Like, I remember my face because I know what face <laughs> I make. Um, I was just like, I don't think we're going to be seeing pillars of gold and Golden Wall. Ugh. That's, that's that's exactly what I said, and that's exactly how I said it, and I won't hear otherwise. It was dumb. I should be ashamed of myself. I should have believed in Trap, and I tell you what, win or lose, I'm going to be believing in Trap in every single series that he plays from now on, because he has shown that he is, if not the world's best Protoss, he is right now, I feel. Like, this kid is absolutely insane. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's honestly in question, right? Like, uh, there was a time when... I mean, especially before we had kind of that mass Protoss leaving, thanks to the military. Like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. classic, and then this, and then hero, and, you know, Zest, whenever he's actually playing really well, and, you know, where's Trap stand? But, I don't know, I think Trap really is a contender for world's best Protoss. Not to be too... Whoa. Yeah. And uh, Raynor is, uh, in a lot of people's minds, world's best Zerg at the moment. Yeah. With, uh, you know, young Saturday being eliminated in the RO8. And we've had like we've had a bunch of GSL and also WCS champions and world champions eliminated from this round of eight. Get Rogue, world champion, gone. Innovation, GSL champion, gone. Of course, Rogue's also a GSL champion. And we had Serral, world champion, gone. It's, it's like and the list continues. Like the, the, the it felt like maybe Clem was the only guy in this bracket that, and and Trap were like the two guys that hadn't won big Premier Championships yet. Right. Yeah. And that I mean that's what Trap's playing for, right? Like finally to win that and then actually win it, not just get to it. You know, get second place and then go home and yeah. kind of be all get her oh, done. No. He wants the first place, man. And for Rainer, he's already proved, you know, with the um, the European finals and defeating the players that he has already. Like, he's already proved he's really good, arguably the greatest right now. But he would love to get some revenge. I mean, he was knocked out of even trying for the finals last season by this exact guy. And he had the exact same thing happen, kind of, where he was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to win. And then Trap's like, well, hold on. Like, I'm actually pretty scary. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, hold on there. That might be replaying through his head um, or not. We know that Rainer definitely has proven to have a good sound mentality, able to bring it back and even to the most desperate of games, which nothing funky yet, guys. Just actually Stargate opener and that three hatch. Golden Wall can do some weird things, lining out the back wall and all that, but neither one did it. Well, we do have the Stargate opening. Of course, it has been scouted. Rainer's two links got in there and saw absolutely oh. everything. Wow, it's like I ah, he's going for the back door, third nexus. All right. All righty then. All right. I, I All right. swear, when I said it, the probes weren't headed there. <laughs> they were. uh, In my defense. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's, we do. Um, we do know that's the plan here. Uh, actually, it's cool to see the. Uh, it feels like it usually it isn't the Zerg that breaks down the back area here of the map. Cool to see it here from uh, Trap, to be the uh, the one that likes to open up the south side here, Golden Wall, open up the map completely. Yeah. You know, I'm, there's really not any way for Rainer to have studied Trap's uh, recent PDZ against Solar. Uh, obviously not knowing he would even be facing Trap in the finals until today. But yeah, Trap did do even, I think, his natural in the back of Boulder Wall. 
Um, so it, it's got to be something that he's, he's got to keep in mind. And then when he sees it, and he will eventually, when he sees that it is going to be potentially about that lower half of Golden Wall, Rain is going to have to decide how he wants to play it. You know, that's, that's the really frustrating thing about playing Golden Wall and the really beautiful thing about watching Golden Wall is that when it comes to, you know, the possibilities, there's actually a south side and a north side possibility. Um, it can really even confuse players, make them hesitate, make them go, oh, well, now I have to worry about the south. Oh, darn it. And do they mine out their own back or don't they? Do they go for something different, trying to abuse it or, or don't they? And I believe that Overlord got close enough to see the mined out back rocks. It did. Now, we do have a, one more Oracle than normal here for Trap. So a little bit more firepower on those laser beams. Good catch from Rando. though. Very, very expert at making sure the Adepts, that uh, regular two Adept attack at the third base does not find damage. Rain has been shutting that down time and time again. Three Oracles gonna get a Queen here. Oh, will they though? Transfusion, sisters doing it for themselves. Nicely done, Queens. <laughs> You know, Rainer's been, uh, he's trying to be on top of the Oracle so much with Trap. I mean, occasionally he's failed. You know, that started off the first game. That's how it started. But the three queens ready to answer the call on the main or the natural, and then a double score crawler against Oracles. You know, that's not usually what happens. It's usually a double score crawler against a Phoenix play or back when Mass Oracle was actually a meme. But against three, I think that's just Rainer being like, oh, I'm not going to let you do trap things and actually get more than oh, Oh, I got really nervous for trap there for a second. The adepts moved out to try and grab those lings, but then the hunter became the hunted. And uh, all of a sudden, the uh, the warp ends do deny the lings. All of course, in the end, there. Rainer going into his roach attack now, so heading towards the roach ravager part of his army, which found so much utility last game. Once again, oh, trap going for the templar archives charge and plus one. This is a bit more what we expected here. Apart from the third oracle, this is a bit more of an old school style build from trap that we kind of kind of thought was happening on pills of gold. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not the Archon drop. It is just that next step in the uh, PVZ evolution. So you might actually try and hit with some Archons and uh, plus one in charge, or you may set up to that storm immediately and kind of play a little more passive. With all six gases already taken, I'm kind of feeling that storm faster and maybe only a bit of a poke, but also with the way that Trap mm. positioned himself, right? Because, yeah. you know, he's not Terran. He can't siege up the back minerals of Rainer here. So he'd have to actually go through his own main as natural. And, and yeah, so I, I think... That fast storm, there it is. Trap, uh, I think Rainer just got that reveal Oh, again. hell muffins. I love this idea. I, yeah, I mean, swarm hosts are, uh, I mean, it have a, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of that, but I do love the idea of Nidus as uh, the situation has presented itself. You know, you got Trap on the south side. How do you get to the south side? Nidus it. That's right. Well, the Roaches are definitely gonna be able to break through here if they're left to their own devices. You know, Trap doesn't actually have a lot to stop this from happening. So even without the uh, the the hell muffins, the swarm hosts just throwing out their locusts here, he is getting a little bit of infrastructure damage. Picks off the cyber core. That means no stalkers, of course, no adepts, no sentries. So that is a nice pickoff. Hmm. Speaking of sentries, I mean he's got oracles, so I don't know if hallucination is strictly necessary. But I don't think he scouted this. Nope, he has not. So this nidus swarm screaming will be the first indication, and pretty much an eighty chance good. it's swarm host. Yeah. Yeah, Trap is getting a bunch of static defense here, dropping a ton of cannons. But cannons will not stop the Locusts. That fleet digging goes down, so Trap's dropping the cannons with intention of going to that super late game sort of stat style army. Yeah. Oh, the Nat was in so much trouble there. It looked like it was almost a response to the Nidus firm, you know? He was like, oh, I went into a mothership, which actually has been a response from the likes of like an M Canning or a, even a Strayed did it, right? Wow. Like, that did not do a whole lot of damage. No, we did not. I thought that natural was in a lot more trouble than it was. The Oracle's coming on in and being quite clutch there for Trap, and also just having units and anticipating the natural being the attack part here. The Locust did absolutely nothing except for shield damage and uh, shield, I guess, battery draining. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be the scariest point for the Protoss, right? They don't have a lot of units to spread around, and all the units are very, uh, they're powerful, but they're going to be weak individually against those Locusts. Until you get more to the 150 supplies, usually like uh, when you start to feel safe. The fact that that first Locust Wave didn't do very much, and the second one didn't do very much, or this one's not going to do very much. It, well, actually, with the army, it might do a whole lot more. Trap needs to mm -hmm. position, get those force fields down, and then also worry about the Locusts. Well, the Locust going for the target fire on the Nexus again, and actually switching to A move here as the Locusts aren't target firing down that Nexus. They're trying to help out this Rogue Ravager army busting through Trap's face. 
And so far, so good. Trap does still have an Immortal or two here. Also an Archon, but the Chill Battery Overcharge has been burnt. And one Archon's kind of stuck in the natural, not really helping at all. So Trap is managing his defenses a little bit and also not really with the unit count to get it done. In comes some charge lots to assist and Rainer's first wave is going to be deflected. But he did take a lot of damage there and Rainer continues to enjoy a nice army supply lead as he rallies more of those units across the map. And the problem right now is that, well, Trap might be able to handle the army fights and survive on four bases, which sounds pretty good, right? I mean, he's not really doing anything to Rainer, and Rainer's going to get bases and Hive Got and him. tech transitions, whatever he wants. Now the damage really is being done, more production going down, a Nexus going down, Robo could be in trouble. The Mothership finally starts, but, I mean, it might already be too late. Yeah, we got Trap taking up really heavily here to go to that really scary tier three A game, but we're not gonna get there, I don't think, Zombie Grub. This big, uh, this big tier two focus here from Rainer is doing so much damage to Trap. He's killed the natural nexus. He is eating a lot of storms here, though. Trap just needs to weather the storm, literally. As does Rainer. Oh, nice where the storm host off cooldown. And that's another dead nexus if he wants it. Yeah, I mean, I saw the night and I was like, oh, that's probably not going to be cleaned up. And it was not. So while Rainer's roaches get cleaned up, those, I mean, he can, he can afford those. No problem. He's on so many bases, on 78 workers. And now he's not only cut down one next to Trap, which would have put him on three, still okay. Now, now Trap is down to two Nexus mining. One of those is made, which is entirely mined out. And there you have it. Not exactly the most fireworks of a game seven, but one that